and uh, welcome back everyone to Calls with the Wizard. And before I introduce my very special guest of the night, uh, once again, I just got one announcement and this was actually from my son. My son is actually, here's what he texted me, okay? He said, looking for a coder, basically someone who designs websites and apps. So if you know anybody who designs websites and apps, either contact me through the DM and then I'll forward you my son's information so you can deal with them one-on-one. So he's looking for someone who designs websites websites and apps. So uh, other than that, I want to address uh, people who complain on the live chat. First of all, I don't mind that you guys complain but I'm addressing you guys. You guys get upset that people call in uh, multiple times and you can't get in. Keep calling. Uh, look, these guys don't have a secret line where they call me, you know, mm-hmm. and I pick up. And somebody, or you Tony's got to remember numbers. I don't remember numbers, at least not these numbers. So you guys got to call. So I'm asking people that like to recall all the time is that call once, give a question and give somebody else an opportunity. Be considerate of the next caller that wants to, you know, call in and ask either me or Esteban Orio uh, 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 a question, okay? So other than that, um, I don't really have much else to say. Alex, do I have any other announcements? Um, no? If I have anything else, I'll, I'll say it during uh, the show. Other than that, you know what? So once again, somebody who is no stranger to uh, Calls with the Wizard, Rodian Radio, uh, the one and only Esteban Orio. How you doing, brother? Good, good. How you doing? I'm glad you're here. Uh, I heard through the grapevine that you were at the Cowboys and Chargers game last night. Yes, I was. And um, I heard the Chargers were deep. Uh, the fans, <laughs> the, the players were deep. But, the, yeah, exactly. But it looked like we were in, we were in uh, Dallas. That's exactly what it looked like yesterday, yes. And uh, uh, I had a fun time over there. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. I always, uh, I always like going to live sports events. Okay. Almost, I mean, even if I don't like the sport, I like going to the least, live event. Yeah, at least being there. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, um, do you have a favorite football team? I don't know if I ever asked you that. Um, I used to, you know, the, I was with the, you know, the Raider Nation when uh, when they were here in a long time okay. after, you know. But um, I always still support, like, uh, home teams. You know? Home teams, yes. Because, you know, if you support the home team, you're supporting your city. In the like the economics of the city and stuff. Absolutely, but, but I still have all my Raider gear. Okay, know? that'll but, work. Um, that'll work. Uh, uh, do you plan to go into any other any more games this uh, this season? Possibly a Rams game. Yeah, I mean, okay. They they uh, invite me to some of the games. Okay. okay, I pretty much if somebody invites me to a sports event, I'm there because everything else is happening that same night. I could go to another time. You know. Right. Right. Uh, you know, speaking of that, I, I believe the Cowboys are coming week four to play the Rams. So if you know anybody that wants to sell some tickets, I know it's going to be a hot a hot ticket because I know yeah. Rams fans show up deep. But and like you saw last night, Cowboy fans show up deep. Oh, they showed up deep. Yeah. yeah. That, shit pretty, that blew me away. I was like, man, this is like, it's like we're in <laughs> Texas right now. Exactly. Like everybody from L.A., you know? Exactly. You know, the last time I saw you, uh, we, we did another interview and did, this was uh, To Live and Die in L.A., Okay, yeah. At the event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, you were my last guest, and we were taking tequila shots at the end. Yep. Uh, um, um, are, if I'm correct, I, I believe Frankie mm-hmm. is going to be doing that again. Are you going to be a part of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always get a lot of love and support there, so uh-huh. it's always like a cool event for me. And Frankie's a good friend of mine, so, you know, we became good friends since... Um, I started doing them. I'm kind of like, I kind of mentor him, you know, oh, with his photography because, you know, he, you know, he's newer to it. So right. he asked me questions and I, I always like to help people, you know, so I became, you know, friendly with him. That's dope. And um, we've done a few shows together and now we have a, a group called the LA Six. It's uh, me, Merrick Morton, Anthony Friedkin. Uh, suitcase Joe Frankie and we had another member but she dropped out mm-hmm. and so um, we're looking for another one to make it six because right now it's the LA5 all right the LA5 all right yeah sounds like a basketball team yeah <laughs> that's dope I, I believe the 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 other one um, to live and die in LA event is it in February I think so yeah the next one mm-hmm. yeah Okay, because uh, I know we had talked, and he, he said, you know, I'm not going to be doing no podcasting this time, but uh, uh, I would like for you to somehow to be a part of it. And I said, well, just 
figure it out and I'm there, bro. Yeah, yeah. Or even if I'm not a part of it, I just want to go because I yeah. really had a great time. Yeah. It's you know? at a different place. Yeah. So it's not the same setup. That's probably why. Right. The only reason why he wouldn't have you doing it because right. there's not a room or something. Yeah. You, you know, uh, if I'm correct, we talked last time that for the for the fans that may not know, you have a vegan truck? Uh, I have a taco truck. Oh, taco truck. We have vegan options because... My friend wanted to do a vegan truck, or he wanted to do a taco truck, and he was like, hey, man, um, you know, would you be down to be a partner? And I was like, well, I don't eat meat or anything anymore, so I don't want to be fake and, like, <laughs> holding pictures of tacos with meat in it and shit. And, right. You know, I was like, if you throw some vegan options on there, he's like, oh, man. Like, he didn't know anything about it. And so I took him to a few places that had good vegan options and he's like man i can't even tell you know i was like that's how it is now you know it's 2022 yeah. it's not like you know they're making tacos out of turnips and you know weird shit you know right 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 because back in the day vegan was like you were just eating raw vegetables yeah yeah brown, raw carrots you know? and broccoli yeah you could still taste the dirt on them you know so <laughs> now they have a bunch of chefs that you know have taken that to the next level you know Right, no, very true, because one of my daughters, I know, I don't know if she's a vegan or she's right there, but she won't eat meat. Yeah. And then the other day I met her friend, which the first time that I ever heard this word, uh, pescatarian. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, what? Like, I almost want to say, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. You know, but because it sounded like a disease, man. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. no, she goes, no, we only eat fish and this, and I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I eat sushi, you know. Yeah. Now, now it, it, being vegan, I know this might sound dumb, but, like, do you eat sushi and, like, yeah. tuna, st stuff like that? No, I eat uh, vegan sushi. It's, like, there's, like, a cucumber one or avocado, you know, cucumber roll or avocado roll. But um, no fish, no meat, no dairy. And it's, for me, it's, um, you know, my doctor pretty much prescribed me to, to change the way I eat. And uh, they're trying to, you know, hack my foot off in there. I was like, well, how can I avoid that? Right? You know, because for a while, after years of pain, you know, um, you know, I, I had broken my back when I was 18. And then oh, wow. I have this neuropathy shit and gout and, and all these different medical conditions. I was like, you know, fuck it, man. If they want to take my foot, like, at least I won't be in pain no more. Right. And, you know, you've seen that fool that killed his wife in Australia. He's, like, running Olympic, you know, uh, the Olympic athlete events uh -huh. with, you know, no no feet, you know, with, with uh, what do they call those? Uh, it's like a fake leg or something like what? Yeah, it's like prosthetic. prosthetic. There we go. Okay. So, um, you know, there's, there's like... Um, amputees and everything from you know veterans that you know they they didn't stop doing anything just because they had something amputated so for a while i was like fuck it you know that's right. what you know if that's what it is that's what it is and um i have a couple friends that are diabetic and they've had limbs cut off and uh i was kind of on the line with it you know right. and accepting it you know that that's that's where i was going and then uh, the last time I went to the hospital, I had like a, I get, I, because of neuropathy, I get these wounds. Okay. And they take forever to heal. Like this one I've had for over a year, it, you know, open wound in your, in wow. your foot, you know. So um, it gets infected if you don't clean take it or it, yeah. you don't take care of it. And uh, it'll take, you know, longer or you lose it. So I went to the hospital and, uh, you know, I'm in the up there and and the, my doctor was there and he called in a specialist and the guy was like you know um yeah you know he's there you know it's it's ready and uh he started drawing on my foot with a sharpie and i was like he goes you know i like i was all fucked up because <laughs> of the pain so right right give you uh it starts with a m uh methadone and so I, I was like, you know, clicking that button, just getting faded in there because I couldn't oh, wow. go to work or nothing. So I was like, you know, let shoot me, you know, as much as you want, you know. Right, right. So um, they came in and they're talking and drawing on my foot and I was all fucked up. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever the fucking guys, <laughs> you know, they're drawing on my feet. Who cares? And he was like, yeah, we could start here, which was like right below your toes. Like, like say right here, if this is your foot. Right. And then he goes, um, 
or we could just go to the the top of the ankle or if if it, if the infection's you know too far for that then we can just go right below the knee Damn, I was like, like that yeah i was starting to hear all that and then i was thinking like well fuck that you know i was like hey uh is there anything i can do they go well if we can get this infection gone and you you can change the way you eat then maybe you you know you have a better chance so was, was it did you think to yourself like damn is that simple I just got to change the way I eat? Yeah, but it's not that simple. You okay. Know? Like, I'm half Italian, half Mexican. Right. Everything that I eat is meat and dairy, you yeah. know, and, like, carbs and sugar. You know, yeah. that was it. Carbs, sugar, meat, and dairy. So I was like, that's fucking everything I eat. And, right. And um, I, st I started doing it, and then the pandemic came, and it became real easy because I'd go in the market, and there's nothing to eat. You know, there's fucking the meat rack is completely wiped out. The chicken rack, like everything's gone. And I would look over to the side and they have that one rack that's just vegan shit. Oh, and I was shit. like, oh, well, there it is. That's easy. You know, everybody wiped out everything else. So I was like, fuck it. I'll take all that. And it, it was easy, you know, started, okay. you know, um, I just cooked everything the same the way I would cook regular shit. But I would just throw that that stuff in there instead and. It was, you know, at first it was rough, you know, especially right. when motherfuckers are, are eating in front of you, your favorite foods, you know, like I'm a, you know. It'd be like somebody showing up eating a burrito de carne asada. Yeah, and you're just smelling that shit or you drive by a fucking Korean barbecue place. Right. And you're like, oh, hell no. Or you, you go to the fucking Italian place and they got those meat Jesus with sausage, <laughs> fucking pepperoni and everything on yes. it. It's like, motherfucker, man, you know, but, um. After, I'd say, a couple months, you know, it's like anything else. You start going to the gym and right. you just get into a groove and you're like, fuck it, you know. And you discipline yourself and and it's over, you know. Like, I could yeah. go the rest of my life easily, never eating. Oh, that's dope. Another that's dope. piece of meat. Like, it's hard when you go to places that they're, they're not as forward thinking. They're like, you know, vegan. What the fuck are you talking about? You right. Know? Like, this is Italy, you know, like, we make pasta and pizza and a lot of fucking meat and, you know, or, right. or Mexico. Um, yeah. Last time I went to Mexico, we went to a, a restaurant in Deefe. It was the one where um, Pancho Villa or Zapata shot the roof. Have you ever yeah, been there? Yeah, no, I heard about it, but yeah, I haven't been there. it's called Opera. Okay. And they have, like, a, the bullet hole in the roof, and they have it, like, like kind of like a plate around it. Oh, okay. So everybody could see it. And um, the dudes were all dressed up nice. And, you know, I thought, like, for sure these guys got some one fucking thing for me. And they didn't have nothing there but a salad. You know, like, if you want to, oh, you're one of those vegan fuckers? Here, eat a yeah. salad, <laughs> you know? So, you know the number one rule down there, you know, don't drink the water. Yes. Don't, uh, you know, don't get drinks with the ice. Unless it's filtered, you know, at a ho big hotel or something yes. like that. So I got the salad, you know, thinking like, well, that's all the vegan shit they had. And I haven't traveled in months, you know, or years, actually, right. because of the pandemic. So in my mind, I was thinking like, oh, fuck, yeah, well, at least they got a salad. I'm just going to tear that shit up and I'll be <laughs> cool. So I, the next day we were supposed to leave, I tore that salad up. By the time we hit my hotel floor, I was like, I was with a couple homies, like, Hey, I'm out. See you guys. And they're like, what, what? I thought we were going to go. And I go, I'm out. I'm gone. I got to go to the room. And I just tightened that motherfucker up and hit the room as fast as I could. And it was like an explosion when I hit the. <laughs> I was like, God damn, man. And, you know, I forgot they washed the lettuce in the, right, right, right. In the water. Wow. And um, I fucking was, you know, stuck there for four days. Wow. Dead, you know. Well, wow, don't, don't you my salad, flight. ice, and and water. Yeah, anything they use uh, water. If it's not a filtration place, whatever, you're, right. you're right. asked out. You know, the last time you were actually here, we talked about uh, the um, LA Originals, okay? Yeah. And uh, But this time, I want to talk about, because I saw it, yeah. and I really, really enjoyed it. And if I'm correct... Uh, you directed it, the, the Cypress Hill documentary? Yeah, I directed it, and like 80% of the footage was my footage. Okay. I have a confession to make, okay? Because last time we talked about the 
LA originals and I get it. Remember how I told you I had to keep rewinding it because I couldn't see the pictures and yeah. then you used the perfect word for it. it they, they didn't have time to breathe the pictures. Right. On this one, I saw possibly you might have learned from putting so much in the, yeah. the LA originals. This one went so much smoother yeah. to me. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. So I hope I don't offend you, but I like the Cypress Hill one better. Yeah. And, and I'm talking about editing wise. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It was it was dope. I really, really enjoyed that one. Yeah, this one, um, I, I did learn, of course, you know, from that one. And that one was like out of my control because, mm -hmm. you know, that one I, I got signed by a company in Argentina. Okay. And the guy fronted like 250 G's and, and we just started going and we had like three editors working and we were filming and he was like, you know, you know, once we went through the 250, right. He was like, Hey, I, I'm going to get this signed to somewhere, you know, and he has a, a number one show in Argentina on Netflix. So he goes, let me take the sizzle reel to Netflix and see if they like it. Argentinian Netflix, like Latin. Yeah. And so they liked it, and they're like, okay, cool. We like it. We, you know, we'll sign it. Um, after you bring it back done, or the first rough cut, we'll show it to America. And they showed it to America, and America was like, hey, we love it, you know. And these wow. guys are from L.A., but we could never even get to talk to nobody here from Netflix, you know. They're just like, who, what? So... We got it signed to Argentina first. They brought it back home, wow. and then they they played it. And, I'm, um, I, I'm going to share with you a quick story. Go ahead. Um, Violet Brown, are you familiar with Violet Brown? Of course. Okay. I'll uh, tell you a little uh, side note. Okay. So her son, Adam, we were all talking and chopping it up, and, and we were thinking of a name. And... We were thinking, you know, this, that, and, that. and he's like, what, what about, you know, like, you know, L.A. Originals or something like that? And I was like, fuck it, you know, that, <laughs> that's good with me. So I passed it because we had a list right. of like 30 names, you know, and we were going over them, like which one stick, which right. one sounded the best, which one felt the best. And he said that one, and I brought it back to the team, and they're like, let's go with that then. That's dope. That's dope. When I had did my first documentary, the, the Rodeo Mixtape documentary, uh, I called the Violet Brown and I said, hey, Violet, you know what? I've been out of the music industry for 15 years. I'm like, I feel like new again. This was 2017. And I said, I want to show you something that I did to honor my manager, Steve, her friend. Steve Yano, the, uh, me rest in peace. He's the one that introduced me to Dr. Dre, Cube, Easy, Lonzo, everybody, Violet. So I felt when he passed away, I didn't want his name to be lost in West Coast hip hop history. So I said, let me, out of my own money, I met a guy on Instagram, met another guy that had cameras, and there we go, and I'm, I think I'm directing, yeah. okay? So I played it for her, and she really, really loved what I had. So she said, I'm gonna bring somebody. She said, because I, ha I have connection to Netflix. Right. And I said, okay, you know, and Violet never lied. So I had everything set up in here and brought a, a lady from India uh, uh, she worked for Netflix. Okay, she sat there. I swear to you, I don't know, Esteban, why people like uh, like the Hulu's, the Amazons, the Netflix, they hire people that weren't even either raised in Southern California or in the the states. Yeah. To judge our music, our culture, our our style. Yeah. And this lady, the whole time she was look, walk, looking at it, I'm look kind of looking at the corner of my eye, and she literally looked like she was smelling shit. Yeah. You know, and then I just like stopped and I said, is everything okay? She goes, I don't get it. Yeah. And I said, okay. I said, D do you mind me asking you like where you're from? What does it have to do? Oh, it has a lot to do with everything. Yeah. You know? And, and she goes, I was, I was born in India. And I said, okay, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, what does it have to do with anything? I said, I'm just asking. Are you, you, yeah. You're Violet's friend. I said, and you told Violet that you had been waiting for something good. Violet calls you. She tells you something good, yeah. but maybe you, you ought to take her word for it. She's broken a lot of artists. Yeah, she's you know? done a lot for the business. Yeah, and she just didn't really care, you know, for, you know, for, for it. She passed up on it, and we just released it on the website. And then when we finally released it on the website, there were people that contacted us from Showtime and other uh, uh, labels uh, that wanted to, like, 
bro, bring it to us. But when I told them that we were already sharing it on our website and it was doing well, uh, they were like, oh, we have to pass on it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much what happened to ours. Yeah. So, um, but now as far as the Cypress Hill, right. from the time that you guys started recording, uh, oh, how long did it take to, to uh, if you will, film all of that stuff, if you don't mind me asking? To, you the, the, mean the whole thing? Yeah, because there were times I, I saw you guys went back to Cypress Hill Avenue. Yeah. And you guys were there recording, you know, that, that type of stuff. Because I know you, you said you had a lot of footage already. Right. Okay. So from that point on. Yes. A year. A year. Okay. One year, okay. yeah. The, right. um, the Netflix LA Originals one, we we had three years from the time that we started till the time it came out. Okay. And the Showtime deal gave us a year. So. Okay. It was, uh, and I got hired, like I'd been pushing um, either the the LA Originals or Cypress for like f- over 15 years. I'd been telling people I want to do this documentary, you know, pitching right. that. And I would get shut down on, you know, a lot of my th- my ideas because I had never done one before. They were like, oh, oh well. You know, can you do a documentary? Well, let's see your work. And I'm like, well, here's my work. But they're like, well, that's not documentary work. Those are music videos or that's web content. Or, yeah. So everywhere you go, you have to show, like, your work unless somebody wants to take a chance on you. So luckily, this guy, um, right, Sebastian Ortega, he, wa- he was a, a fan of ours in the beginning. So he was like, but now he had made his way into the – TV and movie industry, okay. and he owned a production company. So when I met him, you know, he's already super successful, award-winning right. producer, and um, he was like, "Hey, uh, whatever happened to your to your movie Ink? It was called back in the day." Yes, and I go, "Oh, um, it's funny you ask, because I just got the rights back to it, because we had signed a deal in." Uh, maybe uh, 10 years exactly like 10 years prior Mm -hmm. for we were going to do the documentary but they said we don't want to do the documentary we want to make a movie instead like a scripted version of this and they we did a script for seven years like every year for seven years we'd have another script and we're like yeah okay cool it's ready and they're like oh no we don't get it yet you know go back so the guy would go back write another one take him a year right and for seven years that happened and then the deal ended it was like a three movie deal but for seven years it lasted if it didn't happen in seven years it was over wow so then uh brian grazer came up with an idea of doing a lowrider movie which was basically pieces of the original one and came out with the the movie lowriders yeah and said hey look Sorry, that last one didn't work out, but I want to bring you guys in on this one to okay. con- like consult. But you know, we'll call you guys executive producers. So we did that, and then once that movie came out, we were able to get our footage back. Oh, so because they they didn't want they wanted like a non compete. Yes. So we got our footage back, but it was ten years after we had got the original deal, and. So when I met Sebastian, he was like, hey, let's do this. And yeah, um, yeah. And he's the only guy, you know, he's like a, re- um, a movie executive. Right. And he's got a lot of, you know, power. But he rolls in Dickies and, and okay. Chucks and T-shirts and he's tatted from the neck down. But he's from down there. Okay. And he's the only one in Australia with, you know, two Lolos. Wow. So... When I when he flew me down there to check out his operation, I was just like, "Fuck, you know, look at this. This is crazy." Mm-hmm. Like, he had it on lock, right? And then we went to his pad, and he had the two Lolos in the in the garage, and I was like, "Oh, fuck, man, this is perfect." You know, <laughs> like finally, right. I met you know, like you said, I met somebody that gets it. You yes, know, they're in the right age group. They grew up, you know, maybe not in the culture, but they grew up with the culture. Yes, you know, like appreciating and loving the culture. Hip-hop, low riding, all that. Yeah. So that's, the, I, I felt like I, you know, I was at home, you know. Dope, dope. I had to go, you know, to the to the end of the South America to, you know, get that. But, you know, we and got it, it and, and um, Homeboy's cool. You know, I owe him a lot. Yeah, he he's the one who took a chance on me, you know. Dope. I'm loyal to him, and um, 
you know, every project that I have an idea for, I pitch it to him first. Awesome. But with the Cypress thing, I, I there was three other directors up for that, and I wasn't in the hat. Oh, wow. Now, you know, because it had some time had passed, and I had moved on and started doing other stuff. Right. And then um, Muggs and B were like, hey, the fucking LA Originals is dope. You know, you should do the the Cypress one. I go, well, you know, you don't got to ask me twice. Right. So um, they put me back in the back in the hat and uh and then uh the manager and and uh mugs had pitched it to showtime to um you know uh sasha jenkins i heard the name i i don't know her he it's a he he used to work at uh the source and so he has a he were he's a partner in uh, mass appeal which is, you know, production house yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But they I'm, used to be a magazine back in the day, a lifestyle magazine. Right. I'm, I'm just trying to remember the name because I have heard, heard of the name. Okay. But. So he's done a lot of documentaries. Okay. Um, and they got a deal with Showtime to do 30 documentaries based on hip-hop for the 50-year anniversary of hip-hop on Showtime but they've already started doing them. You know, it's like a rollout. Oh, wow. So um, there's the one they just did on uh, Supreme, you know, the drug dealers in New yeah. York. Um, Cypress. Um, they did one called uh, Burn, Hollywood Burn, um, on the on the riots. There's, uh-huh. there's already been a few okay. um, that they've started rolling out for next year's thing. Uh-huh. They're not going to be able to do them all in, you know, f- right. fucking all 30 in, in, in a year, you know, right. but I guess when they pitched it, that's what they got. Dope. So they've been releasing them little by little. And, um, they hired me as the director, you know, and I had all the footage already yes, in yes. the photos. So, so it was, it, it was pretty it was easy. easy. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a no brainer. Oh. When that dropped, what was the response that you got from it? W- w- would you get an immediate great response? Um, yeah. I mean, when it dropped, it dropped number one. Uh, it dropped number one overall. And then it went to number four in in the releases when it dropped. For okay. Like, the crazy thing is, is that um, LA Originals was the same. It dropped uh, number one for documentaries, and it dropped as number four across the board, like st- like with everything. Yeah, yeah. And so both of them, you know, came in in a good place. You know, it was kind of crazy. You know, and like on Netflix, you could see the see how it goes. Like there's a top ten. Right, so right. So it was like ten, eight, back down to nine, up to seven back to eight, up to five, and it got all the way to, to four on the overall. Overall, that's dope. That's but dope. it was number one in Doc, so that was fucking overwhelming, you know? Right, Like right. when you put something out and it does great, you know? And it was it was all because of the people, you know? Yes. It wasn't like I went to a, uh, an awards thing and they, <laughs> they voted for me, you know? It was like right. the, the people did that. The people did that. So... I have like two more questions before we start taking calls. And one of them is uh, this fool. Did you have anything to do with that? This fool on? No. Uh, okay. No, but I, uh, Frankie, uh, he wore all my clothes on there. So, that you know, that's why, you know, people have been like tagging me and stuff to it. So, and, you know, it's like, um, I know like some of the cast and, and Chaz Bajork is, you know, he did the the logo for the, you know, the title, and he's okay. like a super OG. You know, he did the one for the Warriors and and Star Wars and um and Boulevard Nights. Oh, okay. So you know, it was pretty cool to be part of all that. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, so my other question is, what can people expect? We got about maybe five and a half more months, probably, possibly before this this year is up. Can anybody expect? Anything new from Esteban Orio? Uh, like, do you, are you? Do you have anything coming out this year, or what can they possibly uh, be waiting for? Are you, were you working on anything exciting? Um, I, I, I have you know new drops with my merch, of course, but um, I'm I'm working on four books right now, mm. and uh, 
I saw this clip from um, Stil- Sylvester Stallone. It said, um, "When your time, when when the runway behind you is bigger than the runway in front of you, you have to think about your time and think about the importance of the time you have left, and and act accordingly." So that that fucked me up. Just one day, one little post, like just spun yeah. me out, you know. So I was yeah. like. Ever since then, I'm like, well, fuck, man, I, you know, because I had all these, all these ideas, and you know, COVID, and I got that shit, and I almost fucking, you know, I was on the COVID floor. I don't know if I almost died or not, but you know, I was oh. up there with all the fucking shit hooked up, and I was like, man, when I get out of here, this, you know, I'm gonna go hard. So I came out with thinking, you know, I, I was in there right. for 12 days. So I started making a list of all the shit I want to do. Like when I get out, I want to do, you know, all this shit. So I started coming up with ideas for merch. I was coming up with like movie, TV ideas, documentary ideas. And um, one of the things was, you know, I had, I think I have uh, 20 book ideas. So I started putting them in order. Like these are the ones I want to drop. Right. And, um, and this is what I want to have in them from my archives that I could remember. And the next book is um, L.A. Woman 2 because my publishers, they just love that shit in Italy. They're like, you know, we want to do L.A. Woman again. And you have enough content from all the years you've been shooting. So that was our biggest and and fastest response Mm -hmm. that we've done. So um, we're going to go with that one next. Okay. I want to do uh, a book on all the touring life that I had, you totally. know, with Cyprus, House of Pain, everybody we met, every place we went, and then uh, low riding, 25 years worldwide, all the places I've been low riding and all the things I've done in low riding, and then um, hip hop, you know, that's uh, the 50 year anniversary is coming out next year. So, um, was that four? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, any more documentaries or possibly movie? Yeah, um, I, you know, I have all that footage of so much different shit. Yeah. So I can apply that footage to different, like a low riding documentary or hip hop, you know, more hip hop shit. Right. Outside of Cypress Hill. Or um, one of the ones I wanted to do always was the Booyah Tribe. You oh, Because yeah. I feel like they go under the radar big time you know as far as the as far as la yes. you know being represented like they've been in all my videos yeah you know i've known them since the 80s and they have always took me in like family you know like yeah. every time i go anywhere with them it's just like yeah. they you know yeah no and, and i thank you because you're the one that hooked us up with uh Cobra and D-Boy. Yeah. You know, so thank you once again for that. Yeah. Uh, I brought D-Boy back in here for another episode. I was trying to get the dad in here, but I believe they're going through something personal right now. Yeah. So I free, did. free D-Boy. Yes. Free D-Boy. Yeah. So uh, um, I don't know what happened. I just saw it on Instagram, but. Same thing. Um, you know, like, like um, when I saw the thing he did with you guys, mm-hmm. he was such a natural, you know? Yeah, he as is. A, as a youngster, like. Mm-hmm. And his everything I don't know, I just like his music, the yeah. way he flows and I just think that he's a good one to wave the flag for their family. And yes. For that you know, that community. Yes. And um Absolutely. I just think it it'd be cool to put a put a light on them and uh show all the shit that they've done and been through throughout the years and that they didn't really get no light shined on them and even go back to Samoa with them. They got a big following back there. You know, take them oh, over that would there. Be beautiful. And and even New Zealand, they have a big following. I just think it'd be cool to take them back to their roots, film them there, and then show all the shit that we have here, and then show the, the new generation coming up. You know, because there's a lot of them, a yeah. lot of youngsters coming up over yeah. there that are, you know, they're doing good. And um, I just think that'd be a cool one to show, you know. Oh yeah, part of LA that if you don't know, you don't know. Right, but you need to know. You know, you need to know. Yeah. Absolutely, Alex. Go ahead and put up the number up now. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, let, let me go ahead and plug in my uh, Bluetooth, and we're gonna go from right there. 
Uh, not yet. I'll let you know right now. Okay. Hey, how about Sylvester's right here? Yeah, Sylvester. You know what? I think it, I think I have a quote that goes along with it, and I use it a lot. Being 54 years old, I always say now that I have more years behind me than in front of me. Right. Okay. And I think that's pretty much... It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. And the first time I heard that, some older man, he sh shared that with me about himself. Yeah. And I applied it. It's like, wow, that's, that's real talk right there. Yeah, that put a foot in your ass real yeah, quick. Yes, exactly. You know? So let's go ahead and take that, our first call, Stefan. Our first caller. Yes, sir. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? They hung up. Hello? Yes, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hey, um, my name's Spencer, and I'm calling from Sacramento. I just have a question for your guest. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to ask your guest, what is his favorite movie of all time? Do you have a favorite movie of all time, Esteban? No, not, not one. I have a bunch, you know. Give, give us a couple. Um, I'd say uh, like uh, uh, Dog Day Afternoon. Okay. Uh, Deer Hunter. Uh, Goodfellas, The Godfather, Apocalypse Now. Oh, okay. Like, you know, all those old school ones with, yeah. you know, De Niro, Pacino. Okay. And, um, you know, those are the movies I was raised with. You know, Taxi Driver. Okay. You know, like when I first saw Taxi Driver, like I saw all those movies on the big screen and I went multiple times, which wow. was, you know, back in the day, if you liked a movie, you went like, a, a few times to the right. theater and, and right. would trip out on it because you knew that you missed some shit. And um, <laughs> like there was people that used to go see. I remember kids my age in junior high that were like going to see Star Wars like ninety something times. Oh, like I believe one that. kid had a record like ninety nine times he saw it. Wow! Um, I was like, why don't you go to a hundred? You know, he <laughs> goes, I just like ninety nine. You know, so I was I was like, fuck this motherfucker. Saved all his little allowances and went to the movies 99, 99 times, times to see this movie. Polly had 99 hot dogs, too. Yeah, yeah. and 99 popcorns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A caller, I hope that answers your question. Yes, it did. Okay, great. Thank you. And don't show your kids uh, the Bye. Marathon Man. <laughs> you ever see that movie? No, I have not. It, Marathon Man, it, that, is that with... Um, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. And, oh, yeah, that's then, a crazy movie. You're right. Yeah, that's why I hate Dennis. Yeah, okay. Because they were drilling homeboy's teeth with the fucking... With the drill with no uh, no Novocaine or nothing. That was when... Is, is that the one? Is it safe? Yeah. I mean, is it safe? And it, That was creepy. Yeah. Okay. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Uh, XO, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas in the building. What's up, my brother? You got a question for Esteban? Uh, I was going to ask him what uh, his current feeling on graph, the graffiti scene in L.A. is like, and if there's, you know, if there's been any bleed over with, with painting crews kind of be, becoming more militant or having to be more militant out there. Uh, I just figured we might have a unique perspective on that. Um, not really, but uh, the graffiti, like in L.A., it seems like it's at an all-time high as far as people getting up. Like, there's, it, it, to me, I really, I like graffiti, you know. I think it adds layers to the look of the city. And everywhere I go, I always trip out on, like, the graffiti. And, uh here, I guess since the, pande the pandemic, the, the cops use the excuse like you wanted to defund us. So they defunded uh, the, the people that, um, you know, they monitor the graffiti. So ever since then, like the, the, the youth or the graffiti culture has just been going buck wild. And to me, I think it looks pretty cool. Everything's running. Yeah, it's, it's going off out there and, and I love it. All good. Man. All right, Paint the town. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your your phone call. Okay. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's Thank keep it you, going. Walking the mile. Walking the mile. Remember to see that? That's a bad movie. Yeah. Green Mile. <laughs> Dead man walking. Did you ever see that with that that thing on uh, YouTube when it first came out? There's this black lady and she's whooping her her man's ass it was like one of the first no. fights on youtube <laughs> and she's whooping his ass and dragging him in the street it's somewhere down south okay and this old man he's filming it with his phone like the very first iphone they could film uh -huh. 
And, and call her. Hold on one second. Call her. Go ahead. And she's dragging him through the street after she's fucked him up. She could get down. She had hands. And she's like, walking the dog. And the home, <laughs> homeboy's like, walking the dog, walking the dog. And and the little girl, I guess the the, the boyfriend of the husband right. had broken her chain. Oh, and she shit. goes, hey, mama, mama, look at he, he broke your chain. She goes, please don't tell me that at this point in time. And then she went back to bombing <laughs> on him. Like she, Call her. Pissed you her there? Off. Call her. Hello? Yes. Call her. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm uh, Carlos Camarillo from uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. How you doing, my brother? You got a question? I'm here. Yeah, you keep cutting out. I said, you got a question? Yes, no, I just called uh, Luke. You just called what? Uh, I just called us Luke. This. Tony A., I love the show. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. And uh, uh, you got to salute my brother, too, Esteban. Oh, yes, yeah, sir, for sure. Uh, uh, I love his photography. Thank his you. pictures, everything. Oh, man, I love it. The LA. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm man. sorry it's like cutting out here, but. No, that's okay. It's all good, man. Did you have a question or anything, or you just wanted to call a salute, my brother? Uh, I just wanted to call a salute, y'all. Salute to you, my brother. Salute to you. Thank you for your call. Let's keep it pushing. Let's see. Callers, let's go. You guys uh, constantly wanting to take calls and me to take calls. So here we are. Caller, your name and where you calling from? Hello, caller. Hello. Yes. Hey, uh, what up, Tony? What up, Esteban? What's going on? Uh, this is uh, Ruben. Ruben out of Fresno. That's right. What's up, homie? Uh, my question is, uh, hey, what up, man? Uh, my question is, um, how did the, can you speak on the Dickies uh, collaboration you had? Can yeah. You, uh, how that came about? Uh, that came up about two years ago. Um, one of the women that worked for uh, the, I guess, uh, the publicity or promotion uh, agency that worked with Dickies uh, reached out to me and um, asked me if I'd be interested. And, you know, of course I would have been wearing those pants for you know all my life and um they said it'd be for the 100 year anniversary and at that time it was you know two years ago so we were planning you know what we were going to do and we were going to you know they were like what would you like to do and I said you know we could do a documentary a photo book uh, you know of the all these you know low riding or whatever and all the pictures I had of Dickies and we can do a capsule and we can do a new photo shoot and uh we we ended up doing the new photo shoot and the the clothing uh, collaboration and um it got put off like right when the pandemic started i think around april of 2020 it got i had three jobs that were pretty big decent sized jobs and they all got canceled in the in the same week and then we were supposed to go with LA originals to South by Southwest film festival and that got canceled. So, um, luckily they showed that movie on uh, Netflix and, and I was still able to stay out there in the people's eye. But, um, right when the pandemic ended, they came, Dickies came back to me and they're like, Hey, let's pick up where we left off. You know, everybody's back in. So that's what happened. And, uh, and, you know, it was a good drop. Uh, luckily, it sold out in the first, I think, first week. And um, it came yeah, out good. Yeah, move quick, move quick. Yeah. Cool, man. Thank you, man. Um, it, it, is there going to be a, real quick, is there going to be a restock on that stuff? Because I, I missed out on a couple of the, the, the stuff. Um, I don't think so, but the, some of the stuff that there was, uh, the items that were sold out on the, online, but a lot of the, like, I think half of the stuff went to online and then half went to their retailers. So there is still a lot of stock in the stores, but, you know, it's not online. And you actually have to go into the store and grab it from there. Like a Dickie store or like your store or like I'm, um, I'm trying to get some of that stuff. Are you in the, oh, you're in a Fresno? Yeah. Okay. There's a store called uh, Blends. I'm, no, I'm right here. I'm actually right here in Ontario. 
I'm okay. actually in Ontario for a while. Uh, there's a store called yeah. Blends. Uh, they they have a couple different locations, but they have an online store. It's uh, Blends LA or Blends Costa Mesa, and they have a few different stores. Okay. My my friend uh, Tak from Japan, he he owns those stores, and they have a a couple of the items in stock over there. Dope, dope. Blend, you said blend. Yeah, B L E N D S. Uh, thank you. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right. Okay, Bye. let's keep it pushing. We got a couple of missed calls right now. Call back callers. Let's keep it going. This reminds me of the Malcolm McLaren. <laughs> Here we go. Caller, your name or where you calling from? What's up, Tony? Hey, this is Ray Rice. Ray Rice. What's going on, my brother? How you doing, man? I just I just want to call and tell you thank you for the tank tops. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. Glad you got them, man. I'm glad you got them. And I'm glad you called in. Uh, let people know that you got your gear, man. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you would you ever would you ever have Doctor Dre or Ice Cube on Rodeo Radio? I would I would like to see to see them on the on here. Okay, look. Uh, uh, do me a favor. Turn down your TV because I hear the echo. Uh, um, but oh, okay, okay. As, as far as Doctor Dre, okay, keep, keep. yeah, better okay. now. As far as Dr. Dre, nice cube, bro. Let me tell you something. Uh, people always tell me you'll okay. play, you'll have better luck getting Dre in here than Ice Cube. The thing is, I knew mm-hmm. Dre and Cube in the '80s. I don't know the Dre and Cube of today. When I was doing my Rodeo Mixtape right. documentary, I reached out, and even though I, I had mm-hmm. Warren G and I had a bunch of guys that were in contact with them, they always kept leading me back mm-hmm. to to their agent, to their the publicist, and it it was just like you know uh, hitting a brick wall, bro. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, do I what, what I want them on here? Absolutely, you know. But I mean, you know what? It's yeah. Kind of like keep me in your prayers. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Don't feel bad. They did that yeah, to me yeah. too. Oh, okay. So there you go. There you go. Yeah, I try to yeah, get them on both of like my to, documentaries. I would, yeah, I would. I would like to. I would like to see uh, Tom Look or JJ Fat on here. You know what, JJ Fatter, I was actually in talks with Baby D, but since they all live uh-huh. in separate, like, I don't want to say separate states, well, one of them does, it's hard to get them all yeah. together here and when, and when the artists just doing shows. But I've been working on that one, bro. Because uh, I just don't want to bring in one. Okay. I want to bring in all three. Yeah. But I know Baby D, okay. we, we, she said she would be down, so. So, yeah. Okay. So, and well, I would, what, about, what about the dog? Oh, go, okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, as far as the dog pound, I had corrupt booked, but mm-hmm. he was one of the guys that yeah. was um, uh, canceled, obviously because of the pandemic. So I, I guess I would just oh, have, yeah, try to reach right, out yeah. to them. So yeah, okay, all mm-hmm. good, Ray. All good, Ray. Thank you, my yeah, brother. Yeah. yeah, shout out. Okay, no problem. Shout out, shout out to you, Tony A and William Radio. Absolutely, my brother. You stay blessed. We'll talk soon. Ray, Ray Rice is a day one. He's been he's been a part of Rodeo Radio. Since it started, we're about to hit three years, and he's been here. So once again, uh, caller, your name, and where are you calling from? Hey, what's going on? Jorge from Chicago. What's cracking, G? Jorge from Chicago. What's up, my brother? You got a question for Esteban? I do have a question for Esteban. What's going on, Esteban? How's it going, my Jorge? My love, my respect. Thank you. Hey, what's cracking? Oh, of course, man. I just want to let you know that I still have all your Joker Band collection, man. I don't, I don't wear it. I, I just keep it in my closet. I just want to know if you're going to keep it, like, keep it pushing that brand. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got I, it, homie. I mean, I've been, I've been, try, I've, I've been trying to get them, but uh, it's so hard to get them right now this day. Especially here in Chicago, we don't have a stores like that. Yeah, I know yeah. you guys in Cali, probably. Yeah, probably we got it online. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What, what's your... What's your uh, What's your website? Where's it's uh, jokerbrand.com. Oh, okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. If you're watching right, right now, I got, I got one of them on right now. Jokerbrand.com. That's oh. right. Thank you for oh. all the support, oh, right. though. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I actually got like 300, 300, more than 300 uh, shares. Jerry Damn. Like, like that? I, you know what? You That's know, sick. I still have the, uh, you still, uh, you know, like, you probably get a little collaboration with, uh, I don't know, some type of shoes. So I don't, I don't know, but I got a bunch of stuff, man. So, so I just wanted to let you know, big fan, man. I, uh, I got a couple of your books, and uh, much love, my respect, man. Thank you, brother. Hopefully, one day you can come out, you can come over here, and uh, maybe find, find some books or whatever, man. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. I'm down. 
Dope, dope. Thank you, Absolutely, color. Absolutely, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, pues, Tony, my love, my respect to Absolutely, you my guys. brother. You stay blessed. You guys have a blessed night. All right, yeah. You All right. too, me. Esteban, do, do you ever, uh, have you ever gone, I'm sure you probably, like, on a book signing tour at all? Have, have you have you gotten into that? Um, I've hit a few cities that, okay. you know, where, because, you know, it costs a lot to travel and hotels and all right. that, so um, some bookstores, they don't want to, um, you know, they don't want to cover all those expenses. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and, you know, if I if I were to go there and take books with me, I'd end up, you know, it's free, you know. I, oh, okay. I, I went out saying. there, paid the ticket, paid the hotel. Right. Paid to eat out there, sold the books, but, it, you know, it didn't even cover the expenses. So okay. Okay. I've hit a couple of cities like New York, San Francisco, L.A., and, and uh -huh. um, my publisher's from Italy, Drago. Okay. Call her. So hold on one second, please. They took me uh, on a European book signing oh, uh, dope. That's tour. Dope. So that That's was dope. fun. Call her. Your name and where are you calling from? Hey, uh, my name is uh, Miguel from Sacramento. ¿Cómo estás, Miguel? Everything good? Bien, bien. ¿Y ustedes? Aquí nomás tomando unas chelas. Órale. No, I'm not going to lie, bro. I just barely got onto your uh, live right now. I was working, but uh, just seeing you're on. But I just wanted to give a shout out to you and, you know, the guests, you know, because I, I hear you every day, bro. Like, uh, your podcast brings uh, positivity, you know what I mean? Thank you, my bro. Thank it you. makes It makes me... Uh, I got. I could be having a bad day, and out of nowhere, you know, I just you start hearing your podcast. And I, I'm a driver, so when I hear your podcast, it gets me. Uh, I guess in a better mood, better spirits. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, that's what it's all about. And right also, uh, another thing, I'm from I'm from Sacramento, Northern California. Yes. And I grew up with the gangbang life. I'm a northerner. I'm a northerner. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I just want I just want to say one thing, uh, so everyone can hear. Uh, Rasa needs to get rid of this whole shit you know you guys live out there in the south or up here in the north like time to eliminate that bullshit you know what i mean i just want to just want to let the rasa know to you know enough with the gang banging shit you know what i mean let's all get together and just sorry but fuck all that shit you know what i mean we gotta get together and just stop the, the bullshit cheers to that you know what i mean i'm just cheers to that my brother this is why I, this is why i listen to your podcast because you you, you, the way you think, the way you speak, everything you say is is how I feel. You get what I'm saying? So I just wanted to Rafa know that, man. Just enough with the bullshit, enough with the gang banging, and 13, 14, and you know what I mean? Like, yes, that's sir. just, you know, if you weren't brought up into that life, leave it alone. You got these little kids who don't even know what the fuck North or South is. They're just doing it because it's like a trend. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So leave that shit alone. Enough with that shit, homie, and let's just. Get, you know, let's be a Rafa and just get along, man. Fuck all that bullshit. Rafa United, you know what I'm saying? Rafa United. I'm a, I agree with you. I agree with you, bro. And I just want to say again one more time, man. Uh, shout out to you, Tony. Shout out to your guests, man. I just, uh, much love, homie. Like I said, I listen to your podcast every day, homie. And you guys have a good one. Keep on pushing. Thank, thank you, my brother. Thank, thank you for taking time and making the call. Let's keep it going. Okay. Appreciate those type of phone calls. Uh, okay, let's go. We got a couple of missed calls. Let's go, caller. Let's see, caller. Your name and where are you calling from? Renee from Victorville. Renee from Victorville. How are you doing tonight, today, my brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I got two questions for the both of you, Mr. Orion. Give me your Mount Rushmore Latino rappers <laughs> and a Mount Rushmore of Chicano rappers, separate ones, please. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Wow. Uh, okay. Okay. So Latino rappers, and then you say Chic, and then one of Chicano rappers. Yes. Okay, so another one. There's four people on each side. Yeah. Oh, and by side. the way, the greatest movie of all time, Scream, Blackula Scream with Pam Beard. Thank you very much. Oh, all right. All right. Cool. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, well, okay. Uh, well, let me get mine. Yeah, please. Uh, I would probably have to say, and this is not in order, uh, but these are the first people to come to my mind calls. when it comes to, um, I'm, I'm going to have to throw in guys like Big Pun, okay, in there. Yeah, of course, too. I'm going to have to throw in guys like Be Real. Uh, uh, and when I say be real, I, I incorporate the whole Cypress Hill to be one. Okay. Yeah. So I'll say big pun, be real. I would probably have to say, uh, man, and th these are the only groups that are coming to my, to my mind. I'm, I'm probably going to say like the beat nuts, you know, yeah. um, it, it's kind of tough because we're, 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 you're pretty much saying like when you say Latino, you're pretty much saying Latino rap, Latino hip hop, you know yeah. what I'm saying? When it comes to Chicano rap, um, I'd probably have to say I'm, I would have to definitely throw Kid Frost in there. 
I would have to definitely throw in uh, uh, Frank V from Proper Dose Mexican Power. Yeah. Um, I would definitely throw in there uh, Toker from Brownside because of the impact that he still has on uh, today. People yeah. still talk about him. Yep. And um, the other one I would probably have to say to as a, as a whole together, Lighter Shade of Brown. Uh, those are the people that I believe started this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you have any? I think I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I like Fat Joe, too. Yeah, you know, Fat Joe. And, uh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. But, you know, you're, you're, you were right on with it. All good, my brother. Thank you. Callers, let's keep it pushing. All right. Let's keep it pushing. Let's see if we got a number couple. We missed like three phone calls. So, so let's yeah. see. Call it. Let me know whenever you want a refill, brother. You can put How it about right you? Here. Did you get it? You hit it already? Uh, I'm like, I sip on mine. I'm like one of these guys that like to babysit my shit. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll be stuttering by the end of the fucking night. Yeah, me too. A couple of times you've had me here, I was fucking faded, man. I was like, I hope the hoodas are <laughs> outside or I'm done. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? You got to open up the other bottle. Yes, my name is Salim. I'm calling from New York. What's up? Uh, you said Salim? Yes, Salim. I'm the spokesman on behalf of the Afro-Hispanic Association. And What's this would be very brief. I'm just calling in to pay respect. But my question is, why don't you all, and I'm saying this as family, hermanos, why don't you all have more broadcasts about Latinos in the United States returning back to Latin America to develop Latin America? Because... Right now, Latin America, our ancestral nations are being neo-colonized by China and various different Arabian and Asian nations. But uh, I'll, I'll hang up to hear the answer. Well, Thanks again. Well, well, hold on. Before you hang up, can I ask you a question? He hung up. You want to, you, well, what question would you ask him? No, no, I just wanted to say, what would it take to get you down here to get, to get you to speak on, on the podcast? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Th that would be perfect instead of... You asking me, you know, what I think about it. I mean, if I think, if anything, you know, what I said, what I'll respect, he'll be perfect for him to fly out here and yeah. talk on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you need that, somebody with uh, with the with that knowledge, all the research, yeah, yeah, and exactly. has all those those answers because that's, that's some deep shit. It is. And you it need is the right person to speak on it because exactly. You ask me, I'd be over here. Well, <laughs> you know, caller, uh, your name and where you calling from. It's Sarah. I'm calling from Northridge, California. How you doing? Good. How are you? Mm. I'm good. I can never complain. Good, good. Um, what's up, Tony? I just want to say what's up. And I want to say what's up to Stevon. Um, I just, I love everything you do for this culture. Thank um, you. You're a gem in this hip hop culture. And I just, stories that you talk about with Cypress Hill and Soul Assassins. Do you, I have a question, um, would you ever think about having another like compound or office like the Soul Assassins uh, compound that you had? I mean, yeah, I, I think about it all the time, but um, like that was a, there was like a group of six of us that, that did that. And um, you know, you, it, it, it takes a uh, teamwork to make the dream work and, and uh yeah that you'd like like just to give you a, an idea of what that was was um we went down there in 2000 and we rented those warehouses for uh 2000 each and now they're going for over 10,000 the same exact warehouse so mm. that area like wow. you know we kind of got moved out of there because of you know how big it was you know how how fast it was developing so mm -hmm. we'd have to you know start out from scratch and go somewhere else and it's a it's a lot you know to, to keep together and yeah. and to keep doing it but right now my focus is on you know just working on the next project that that'll have me out there um because that yeah. you know we that was a great thing but you know, it, it had its time. It had its run. Yeah. Hopefully in the yeah, future. Yeah, it was just know? awesome to see on the LA Originals um, yeah. doc. So I was just wondering. I mean, and my, I just, I love uh, NBA, your new video with mugs and oh, Prime Apple. awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of want to just uh, f try and do like some type of uh, Chicano museum, you know, somewhere down the line. 
like a nonprofit museum that has, you know, Chicano art in it. Because I see a lot of uh, museums with Latino stuff, but they don't really um, have the stuff that we're into here in uh, in L.A., you know? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. I saw some of your stuff at the Beyond the Street. So yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for thank everything you do. You guys have a good night. You, you too. too. Have a blessed one. Let's keep it pushing. All right. Okay, we got a call. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony Megan? Man, I have a question for us, Um, Who are like the upcoming photographers that you're kind of eyeing and seeing who's, who's coming up? Do you have any uh, photographers that you recommend? Um, not any one in particular, but I, I see a, a lot of great work on uh, Instagram that uh, that I like. But you know, there's so much coming through my my feed or whatever that I just like to like the photos and keep it moving, and then. Uh, you know, cause I get stuck on there. Like I could go on Instagram and get stuck for an hour easy and then flip over to a mm-hmm. TikTok and get stuck and, uh, <laughs> fucking Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. By Tinder. The time, yeah. Four, four hours later, I'm asked out on yeah, anything Christian I'm trying Mingle. to work on. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, stay focused on my work, but, um, there is a lot of good, uh, people out there you know shooting everything and um i just haven't been able to lock in and focus on one one person or anything like that all good all right make a man thank you man all right thank you tony you got it later later man. Later. okay let's keep it pushing i got another one for you Stevan. ready for you mm-hmm. the police are not outside i told them not to be here because you were going to be here well this was pre-recorded <laughs> yes. so any of you coppers out there <laughs> caller i left already <laughs> caller your name or where are you calling from Hey, Kibula, this is Sam from El Centro. Sam from El Centro. Como estas, carnal? Everything good? Oh, uh, yes. Excellent. I can't complain. Um, just want to say much respect to the both of you gentlemen. Gracias, carnal. And what you're doing. I'm a church server as well, and I've been uh, listening to you since the beginning. I finally got through. But, uh, yeah, much love and respect. And a question for Esteban is, uh, did you uh, have, were you there when Be Real discovered the psycho realm? Uh, that day, no, I wasn't there. Were you around? No. Oh, okay. But you, uh, you went when you were on tours and everything. They were also with you guys right there. Huh? Yeah, we did some work with. Well, I did some work with them early in the early days, but yeah, I haven't worked with them in years. Oh, okay. All right, man. Uh, uh, much luck to you guys, huh? Much respect. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate those questions, man. All right, let's keep it pushing. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, this is pre-recorded once again. Mm-hmm. This is so radio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, okay, uh, let's keep it going. All right. Come on, callers. You guys talking all that massa. If you got the balls, make the calls. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Caller, your name or where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony? This is the homie Kike from the city of Escondido. Kike from Escondido. Como estas, bro? Bien, carnal. Muchas gracias. Um, one question for each of you, and then I'm out of here, bro. Um, for Esteban. Yes, sir. Uh, did he ever get to like, shoot any of the members of the brown side? Mm. Uh, no, I, I did not never get to do that because around the time they were, they were out, was uh, I was on full-blown tour with uh, Cypress Hill, and I was a tour manager, so I was just, you know. Traveling the world. Yeah, traveling the world. Not only that, it was like I was working like 20 hours a day just focusing on those tours and keeping everything on in our ship, you know, tight. So I didn't really um, get to get out there too much with any other groups or I pretty much, uh, there was, uh, I worked with four bands uh, tour managing in those times. And it was um, House of Pain first for like uh, about four years and then uh, Cypress Hill. But in between the House of Pain, I, I tour managed uh, a group called Proper Grounds. Um, shout out to Slang. And um, and they were like a, a hip-hop group that did rock. They okay. were the first group signed to Madonna's label. And then I worked with Candlebox. They were a rock group. And then I went back to um, House of Pain when I was off that break. And went to Cypress Hill, and I was with them for 94 to 
2005. Dope. Dope. So I didn't get to get into uh, shooting too much other or working with other bands, period. Right, right. Yeah, you were always busy. Yeah. 20 hour days, bro. All right. And a uh, question for you, Tony, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, Are you ever going to have either like Rick Kid or uh, Rich G back for like a part two? I'm sorry, uh, which who? Uh, are you going to have Wicked or Rich G back for like an interview, like a part two on Rodium Radio? You know what? I I, I would I want to get Rich G back on Calls with the Wizard, bro. Because uh, I interviewed Rich G twice already. But I want, I want him to take calls, and I'm going to tell you why. Porque a lot of people love to talk about Brownside, love to talk about Toker. And, and, I, and I vowed not only to Wicked, but also to Clever, to Benz. And to everybody that's a part of the Brownside family that I would always keep uh, Toker's name alive. So I think it's only uh, uh, good to uh, have Rich G come back. And if people want to ask him questions, then he can answer them. Now, as far as Wicked, yes, I've reached out to him several times. But I'll be honest with you, and I hope he's watching. I never got any response, so I don't know if his uh, number changed, bro. But you can you can expect okay. Rich G back, though. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Is it like sooner than later or later than sooner? Um, I'm hoping next month. Ah, uh, hell yeah. Uh, muchas gracias. And uh, once again, thank you to both of you for the contributions to the game. You know what I mean? Stay blessed, my brother. And, thank uh, you. Okay. Okay. Let's keep it pushing. Let's see. You having a good time, Esteban? Hell yeah. Let's keep it, let's keep it going. Call your name and where are you calling from? Mm-hmm. Caller. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you about three seconds, caller. Okay, they hung up. Let's go. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Caller. Yes, sir. Caller. Hey, this is, hey, what's up, Tony? What's up, brother? Your voice sounds familiar. This is Tony? Right? Yeah. Yeah, this is Avi G from Colorado. Yeah. I took a hiatus for a while. Yeah, bro. What you my life right. Graduated college. Dope, Congrats. dope. Congratulations, <laughs> bro. What, what you want bagging today, man? What you want bagging, Obi? Not much, not much. You know me, I'd be out bagging all the time. <laughs> uh, man, I'd be working. Hey, right on, Doc. Thank you for noticing that. I appreciate that. Yes, I do. Yes, you I know, do. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to catch up to you, my boy. Well, you know what, man? You know what? <laughs> what? I'm trying to catch up to myself because I still haven't even finished this shot. But anyways, you got a question, my bro? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just got kind of more of a, more of just a, a not a question, but a, uh, uh, I don't know, the opposite of a question, uh, just a compliment, a shout out, a salute. <laughs> said, oh yeah, comment. No, I just yeah. want to say much love to Esteban, much love to everything that goes on and stuff like that. I got nothing but love for that shit, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for keeping the culture alive, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate okay. it. Yes, sir. Stay blessed, bro. Thank you, man. Okay. He, by the way, he called from he's uh, from Colorado. Oh, okay. I, I went out there to shoot the the MMA fighter Lionheart. Oh no shit. Yeah, during I think it was during the pandemic. Yeah, okay. that was pretty cool. Call your name. Where are you calling from? Tony, you already know from my Florida house. Uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Yes, sir. What's up, man? <laughs> uh, I'm right How here. You doing? I'm right here, my brother. Just chilling. Just chilling, my brother. You got a question for uh, me or yeah. Stevan? Yes, yes. I wanna, uh, wanted to ask you, what was it like for you to work with uh, Cypress Hill? Like, what was that like for you? Um, it was sick, homie. It was like one of the best parts of my life, um, traveling around with them, being around, you know, what I love, which was, you know, hip-hop um, 24-7. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, it's kind of hard to explain, but... Um, you know, I was traveling with guys that were like my brothers. At the same time, I was yeah. working with a band that was one of my favorite bands of all times. And I was seeing them do groundbreaking shit every day. So it, it it's like, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it was, it was fucking one of the coolest parts of my lifetime. And uh, we did a lot of cool shit together and um, oh, yeah. experienced a lot of, uh, good life. Awesome, man. Oh yeah. Um. So, so like you, you direct and like do your own films, right? 
Yes. So I wanted to ask you my next question. Would you ever work but um with Scar? Naomi Scar, he's he's a big time actor too. Like would you work with him in the future? Um, I, if, if I had the right project, you know, I, I never know what, what's coming up, you know? So I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that'd be, cause you know, how, like I always, that'd pitch, be awesome. I always pitch people for different parts and, um, you know, sometimes, uh, I'm outvoted, you know? So like <laughs> I pitch like different people for different parts of the movie and, and I got outvoted and I wasn't happy about it, but you know, I'm not cutting the checks either. So. I just got to sit back. Yeah. All good. So, yeah. Thank you, my bro. Thank Much you. love and respect to you, man. I love, every, I love everything you're doing. Thank you, you know, Keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. And um, can't wait for your, your book to come out, man. I'll be the, one of the first ones to get a copy. Hell yeah. Antonio, Thank much love and respect to you. All good, my bro. You're on radio. And big shout out to my uh, to my main artist that I look up to, Magic Girl. Much love and respect to you if you're listening. Much love and respect to Bakerfield. And can't wait to see you on the show again. All good. Much of respect. All good. Thank you. Thank you. You know what, Steven? I'm still waiting for you to take a picture of me with your camera. Oh, <laughs> man. At least one black and white one. What? At least one. Well, I got to come earlier when the sunlight's out. Yeah, yeah you got to be like, I Tony, I got one today. picture left. Here we you should have did it today. Yeah. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? I'm down. Hey, this is Ray from South Del Monte. I want to say what's up to Tony A. And uh, Stefan, I wanted to say... If you could sh- wonder if you could share a cycle realm story with us all, you got a good cycle realm story. Um, let's see. Uh, Monte yeah, in the building. Go for it, my brother. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I would just say, uh, you know, it was cool working with them when when we did we did the uh, we did the their first two videos and then I uh, did a first you know a few photo shoots with them and. Um, you know that was cool uh, at that time. That was so. So you did the first two videos. Yeah, I did that's Stone dope. Garden, uh, Psycho City Blocks. Oh, that's great times right there, bro. Yeah. So um, that was, you know, all that shit is cool. Dope, man. Dope. Thank you, Carnal. Hopefully that answered your question, man. Yeah. Respect to Tony and La Stefan. You guys have a good night. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Man. Okay, let's keep it pushing. Uh, we got a couple more. Let's see who's on the call. On the request line. The request line, yes. You should, my... you should play that beat that from the uh, Malcolm McLaren <laughs> be, behind. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Oh shit! Hey, I'm uh, Joaquin from Kansas City. You're, I heard Kansas City, but I heard Joaquin. Okay, Joaquin. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? You got a question? Oh, the letter. Sorry. Yeah, 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 I do. I got a question for both of you guys, actually. Um, Tony, um, uh, what's up with the SF40s? Uh, you guys going to be doing something, like an album or? No, uh, EP. Or, uh, EP. What's up with that? Uh, uh, EP. So far, look, let me tell you something. I'm glad you reminded me, bro, because I've been doing so much shit, bro. And SF40 was just here not so long that ago. Was hard, dog. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And SF40, I hope you're watching because this is about you, homie. Uh, we, we usually talk at least maybe once or twice every week. And me and SF40 are knocking out our EP. We announced it when, last time I had him here. And I will also be directing his video but, and also producing his uh, EP, which is about six or seven songs. So we're going to do about 10 songs together, p- pick the best seven songs out of it, and then release them and then premiere it here, bro. The dude's a good dude, bro. I, I like what he spits. So be looking out for that, Carnal. Yeah, he's real different with his music, man. He's not your typical, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say Chicano rap music. He's not your average, like, just MC, you know? Yes. Yes. No. And then, uh, Devon, I got a question for you, man. Um, Devon, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you remember, uh, do you remember that, uh, that picture? There's a picture with, like, all, like, I think it was, like, 98 or something. Uh-huh. There's like a picture of all like the current Latin MCs of that time. Did you take that picture? The one with Big Duke in the middle? You know what you want talking about? Yeah, that was in uh, New York. In um, I think they call it uh, Southside Port. Okay. It was uh, there's the boats in the background, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was for uh, Industry Insider. Uh, you took that? Yeah, that was a uh, wow. Chang Weisenberg and wow. uh, Miles Davis. They used to own. Um, Industry Insider, and now Chang owns Gorilla okay. Union. 
And then Muggs, I mean, uh, Miles went on to own Dub Magazine. Oh, okay, now hold on, Big Dog. I'm going to ask Esteban a question right Go now. Go for because, it. Because um, yeah. do you have it where I can buy it a poster size? Because I would like to hang that up in here. Yeah, I'll give you one. Por favor? That's yeah. the last picture. Oh yeah, I'll give God. you a magazine and that. And that was uh, just for, the, you know, of course for the listeners, but those that don't know also, um, Chang from Industry Insider and Miles right. reached out to everybody in the Latin hip hop community and we, uh-huh. wanted, we wanted everybody on there. And um, those are the ones that showed up. So, so there were actually more that didn't show up then? Yeah, of course. Wow. But, you know, and they probably thought like, at that time, like, you know, there was a source and double XL and those were like the A list right. magazines. Right. And Industry Insider was kinda up and coming and right. not at that same level. So people were like, ah, you know, it's industry insider and right. you know, is everybody gonna show up? But like pretty much most of the people from LA showed up. Okay. And then a a couple of the guys, um the Terror Squad, Fat Joe, Cuban Link, um, Big Pun showed up with yeah. his son, and uh, you know it, that's an it, incredible it, classic photo, man. Yeah, you, you know now, Stephen. I have to ask, and I'm probably asking his question as well. Other than that one picture, yeah, obviously there's more. Yeah, of course. Wow. Okay. I mean, there, there's more of them, that group, right? But then I went and shot individuals of each group. You know, did those ever go public? There's a couple of them in the issue that I could, you know, when okay. I give it to you. But please, um, bro, how I'm, about I, I'll, I'll bring you the poster, bring you the magazine, and we'll do the photo shoot all in one. Hell yeah! And what are you guys laughing at? Let's go. God hell damn. yeah! Let, let, let's do. Let, oh. Hell yeah! You know what? Because I want to hang that, I want to hang that shit up in here. Because whenever somebody calls and uh, asks me for Mount Rushmore Latino, yeah. pick anybody from there. Yeah, yeah. Pick anybody. There from you there. go. So. Anybody, yeah. Exactly, bro. Yeah. yeah, like lighter shade of brown wasn't in there, and uh, yeah, and and proper dose, and you know, right, a couple right. others, but you know, people are like, hey, what? Well, they didn't get, they didn't fly out there, you know. Right, and, 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 and you know what? I want to. I say was this. just a photographer. Yes, and I want to say this, Stevan, because somebody, uh, I remember B Real posted that on his page, and 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 I want to say this on behalf of B Real. Uh, somebody said, commented, not one motherfucking Mexican in there. Bro, what do your fucking homework. Looking at? Yeah, exactly. There's do a group it. called The Mexicans in there. Like, it don't get no me- <laughs> more Mexican, The Mexican. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Uh, exactly. B Real's Mexican. E- exactly. And B Real said, look closer, fuckhead. That yeah. was his comment. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm thankful Ra- for that. Ralph M., the Mexican, Mexican is in there. Exactly. You know, Funk Dubious was there. Fuck, there was like, a shitload of Mexicans in there. So, antes de hablar es bueno pensar. Fernando Valenzuela. That's yeah. what he said. So, all good, my brother. Thank you for calling, yeah, man. Yeah, calladito más bonito, yeah. as they say. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, man, thank you, guys. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. that, man. I nah, appreciate I'm that question. Calladito más bonito is the saying, you know? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, I, I appreciate you guys, man. I love your guys' show, man. And, uh, thank yeah, you. it's funny you said Ralph and the Mexican, man. And I, I was just thinking about the episode that you had where where he came on and you were playing all your beats, man. He had them sick ass, like, man, they were like, I don't want to, I mean, I don't know if you consider them boom bat beats or what, but man, that, that was a sick ass episode, man. I wish you would do something like that again, man. Well, well you know what, you know, but, uh, we, we did two guys, episodes, man, bro. And, uh, we did two episodes. Yeah, yeah, I've seen both of them, yeah. All good, yes, yes. Yeah. He's a beast, huh, yeah, Ralph? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Carnal. Hey, can I give a shout oh, out yeah. real quick? Go for it. A uh, shout out to my homie Jason from 360 Boxing. He just hit me up. Hell yeah, Jason in the building. Okay, let's see. Um, call your name and where are you calling from? Mega Man, what's up? Uh, Tony, I got another question for Esteban. Okay, I Mega noticed Man. with the IG. Go ahead. <laughs> what's up? I know IG policies are always changing, so I know that you posted a, a Esteban uh, Merrick um, Morton photos. His page was deleted. Yeah. Is that going to be going around with a lot of people's pages now? They're just getting deleted left and right because there's a lot of good pictures on his page. Well, uh, the the president of IG called me the other day and he told me that, that it's not going to be happening anymore because I told him, hey, what the fuck, man? That's fucked up. You did Merrick like that. Yeah. So he called me up. He's like, hey, I'm sorry, you know. Because he found out shit. you put a green light on his ass. Yeah, he found out that I taught that said, you know, that yeah. I posted. That's fucked up, homie. How you going to do the homie like that? Yeah. So mm-hmm. he he told me that 
chances are that it might not happen, but if a couple slip through his fingers, then he's sorry. So, yeah. no, I'm just kidding, homie. I don't know anybody on Instagram, but I hope it don't. You know, I hope they don't do me dirty <laughs> like him. that. The motherfuckers erased it uh, like 2,000 of my followers uh, like a month ago. For reals? Yeah, I was at like 455 and it went down to 453. Like that? Yeah, Damn, I don't know man. if they did one of those bot sweeps or whatever when they sweep oh, the robots okay. or whatever. Yeah, but you know, fuck it, man. I can't. Uh, I can't be burned out on that shit. I gotta I, keep it you moving. know what, someone? Hey, you know what? Fuck the haters and fuck the cucks, man. Yeah, fuck them. Woo woo! I drink to that. He said, "Fuck the cucks." Where's the uh, camera? Fuck out. Fuck yeah. all those cucks. Fuck them. They Cheers. can suck a okay. fucking dick. Okay. That's what I say. All right, I'm out. Whoa, whoa. All right, all right. Later, guys, I'm out. Yes, Me sir. too. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad hey, it's I'm, fucked up. You make me drink over here, man. I'm, <laughs> fucking gout's kicking in. No, my but fucking that, knees. Are, no, but that's vegan tequila. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Espolón. There's yeah. no meat or no dairy in here. <laughs> Call us your name. Where are you calling from? What's up, Tony A. The Wizard. What's up, Esteban? It's your boy Notorious out of Southgate. How you doing, brother? Um, I just, I just want to give a shout out. I just want to give. I'm doing good, thank you. I just want to give a shout out to Esteban. Thank you. I'm a photographer myself, bro, and you you're go. like a, you're like a god to us, bro. You like an icon. Thank and, you. And um, I just have, I have this random question. So right now I'm shooting with an A7 III, Sony A7, A7 III. Sorry. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, now, okay. So my question to you is, you think I'm better off? Because I already see the the A7 IV. You think I'm better off investing into getting that camera, or should I just drop my chips and start collecting on on different lenses, like different G masters or whatever? Um. Well, do the lenses uh, go with both cameras, like for the A7 III and IV? Oh, yeah, most, then yes, I, sir, most definitely. Then I would probably keep the lenses that you got and sell that other one, the A3, and go with the A4 just so you you got the new new model, you know? It's like, the, it's like a car, you know? You have the new grill, the new lights. The, they might have some sir, new yes, features. Because nah. I, I have the Canon uh, R5. And they did one of those uh, smash and grabs on me. So they got me on that one. Yeah. But I went out and got the R5, R5S or R5C, I don't know, which is a better one because it has a fan and it was able to cool the camera down to where the the camera wouldn't stop right in the middle of filming. So, I mean, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise, but um, I always try to update because oh. it's always like, you know. And is there, is, this is like having is, the is iPhone there any 3. Advice that they- most definitely. Is, is there uh, another quick question? Is there any advice you could give, like a photographer, like as far as color grading, right? Because there's sometimes where let's just say I shoot a beautiful video on my camera, it looks amazing, right? Then I go ahead and I transfer it to my Mac, and just the the light is a little bit off, it looks a little bit bright. It's on the yellow side. Is there any advice you could give on color grading? Um, I shoot all my uh, everything on my camera uh, normal, so that there's no color on the camera. And then the, you add the color in the when you do the editing. Okay, okay, appreciate that. Thank you. So it's like real flat when I'm shooting it, and it, and I know that, so I have that in mind. And then when I go to editing, that's when I add in the coloring. That's when you do your magic. Yeah, because then it's like you're not trying yeah. to exactly you know match it to what the camera does, because the camera is a different machine than than your cam than your editing. Exactly. All good. Thank you, bro. Appreciate right, you, homie. Appreciate appreciate the gems, OG. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a good night. Thank Absolutely. you, too. Yes, sir. Don't drink and drive. Don't. Appreciate Because you might spill your drink. Yeah. So. You might have to hit the brakes. <laughs> you know, but I, I appreciate you calling the, the president of Instagram. Yeah, you know, yeah. That yeah, boy is yeah, tripping. Yeah, because of not fucking. Cancel, how are you going to cancel Merrick Morton? Exactly. If not, you're going to fucking lost, green light on his You ass. must have done lost your motherfucking mind. Yeah. Caller, your name or where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony, man? My name is Joe. I'm calling from Paso Robles, California. Paso Robles. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? You got a question for Esteban? Or for Tony? Absolutely. I got a question involved both of you. Um, you know, in audio, you know, people like analog and digital, they like to fight about that. How does that work when it comes to video, when it comes to film versus digital? Esteban, how do you feel? Um, I don't feel there's no argument. Film is better. But, um, you know, I let everybody 
well, there's nothing I can do about it, you know, because times have changed. I use digital now because everybody wants uh, everything like uh, fast food, you know. They want their Big Mac. They want it right now. They want it with no onions. They want it fresh. So that's how they want their videos. Like it's a trip. Like I'll shoot a video, some video footage or photos of somebody, and as I'm driving away, they'll be like, "Hey, can you shoot me something so I could post it?" I'm like, "God damn, I I barely got in, I barely put my fucking car in drive, and you're already asking me for shit." I just passed Jack in the box, and you were asking. Yeah, I didn't even fucking get out the driveway yet, and these motherfuckers are asking me for shit, but. Um, I like film because I just like that look. Absolutely, you know, I come from the old school, and and that's the way. Hey, that's hey Stephen, have you ever got somebody say you're a fucking dinosaur, bro? Why don't you just upgrade? Yeah, have you ever gotten stuff like that? Yeah, all the time. Damn, but you know, it is what it is. You know, it is what My, it is. The runway behind me is longer than the <laughs> runway in front of me, and I just have to accept that shit. Shout out to Sylvester; he's right here chilling. He's right the there chilling way. with his hands up. Whoa, whoa. Have you ever ran those steps? No. I did. You know what yeah. I did? Yeah, I ran How up there, that? and I threw my hands in the air. Is everybody over there doing the same thing? Yes, and then I said, now waving like you just don't care. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? But if you're in the building and you like Tony A, let me hear you say, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I did. So That's right. Did they film it? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Did you do some burpees at the top, too? No, because I've been waiting for you to shoot my picture, and you weren't there. Yeah, okay. next time, when I bring the <laughs> magazine cover and the poster. <laughs> Oh, good. Thank you, caller. Appreciate you, homie. Thanks. Good night. All right. Oh, shit. That shit was hilarious. Okay, let's go. Let's keep it pushing. It's important to have humor. Like, seriously. Yeah, and AC. Where's it? Did they turn it on yet? Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Dozer from Thousand Oaks, California. Dozer from Thousand Oaks, California. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing wonderful, Tony A. What's up, Esteban? How you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? Good, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good, uh, you know. So I was around back in the day with the homies, and I know you were doing shit back in the day, you know, the Rainbow Room. Back, yeah. you know, homies are here and there. You know, I'm not going to name uh, names, but, yeah, you know, yeah. certain people we, we all associate with, good folks. Uh, I was just wondering if, when are you going to write the real story and produce a movie on the, the you know, where the real homies came up and were doing the legalized bud game when we came out there and uh, we started putting shit down the proper way. Yeah. And people get paid, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, um, like for, for me, I pitch all kinds of projects to like production people, the ones that make the, that they cut the checks for the movies because the where i'm at right now is I, I have to have everything at the same level of quality so i can't uh you know just be like well fuck those fuck all those production people i'm just gonna go shoot everything myself for free and and put out on youtube because i would like uh damage what i'm trying to do you know as far as sh shedding light on shit in a bigger platform so i pitch all kinds of stuff to to people and you know, I get shot down until finally somebody says, yeah, let's roll with it. So as soon as they do that, then that's what, I, you know, then I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? You, you, you know what, Esteban, I'm, I'm glad you shared that. Cheers. Um, cheers. Hold on. Hold on. So, so, so all I'm saying is that I just said, it's potential for a great movie. Something to be made, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I hear you. Right now. I'm down, I, but, you know. I think I know who you're you know, talking and, about. And it's going to be a part of your history. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You, you, you know, when we, especially if you were a part of the medical game at the beginning, and I know you were. Yeah. I know you've seen a lot of shit going down, man. You know, I know a lot of people, so it's just be nice to get something out there like that, and, you know, to, to make the real people see, like, what time it was. It was, it was a little prohibitionary kind of I yeah, do. for you sure know, it was. It was. Yeah, those those are the stories yeah. I'm trying to tell. Is the stories of you know like the foundation of of what we do. So I'm trying to put those out there, and um, you know when when they bite, it's right, and uh, that's when I'm going to do it. But until then, I'm just I still have everything in the bullpen. All good. I like All right, it. So, uh, look, I'm going to tell you what, man. I'm going to hit you up, brother. 
I'm gonna email you, hit you up, and okay. get get a link up. Okay, for sure. I can give you a little story line. You can you can start narrating. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and for go sure. With it, brother. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, Bye. brother. Take it easy. He said, "When when they bite, it's right." Damn. Yeah. You know, I, I can't do nothing until that. You know, because caller, your name, where you calling from? Oh, uh, hey, what's up, guys? This is uh, Elias from Pomona. Pomona's in the building. Uh, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your thoughts on uh, Savage Studios passing away. And uh, would you would you have ever uh, had him in your show if he was still alive? You know what, bro? The, the, uh, I I don't know the dude. Uh, the only thing that I know is what people have put out there about him on uh, Instagram, on people put out there on YouTube, stuff like that. I really don't know too much about the guy um, other than what people have put out there, bro. Um, so, you know, I, I really don't know what what much else to say. But, you know, other than what what's out there already. I know that they, uh, people have said that, uh, you know, what happened on Friday, that's what happened. And, like, bro, I really don't know what else to say, bro. All right, right on. Esteban, uh, do you have anything you want to add? Keep up the good work. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Who yeah, like, it, it, like it, it's hard for us to speak on it when we don't know, and the only information we got wasn't from the news; it was from social media. Yeah. So it, it's hard for us to even speculate on that, bro. So, um, you know, until the news says something and they confirm it, you know, it, it's hard for us to speak on it. So. So yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate that. 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 Call in that question, bro. Okay. That was it. Uh, let's go. You know, let's, call is your name or where are you calling from? Yo, Tony. Tony A. Yes. Oh, man. I'm a long time viewer of the show. My name is Victor Bravo, man, from San Diego. Okay. What's up, OG? Uh, what's up, my brother? You from San Diego's in the building, bro. You got a question, bro? Hell yeah. My question is for Esteban. Yeah. All right, man. Yo, I've been DJing in San Diego and all over California for a long time. I really want to set my game up. What is your advice for a young artist moving up in the ranks, in the music industry, especially in the music scene? to get the foot in and get residency in nightclubs, concerts, and arenas? Uh, for me, I'd say, you know, you have all the opportunity in the world to promote yourself, like on uh, TikTok or uh, Instagram, to bring light to yourself for those promoters to see. Um, you know, I heard that TikTok is bigger as far as... Um, people that aren't aren't necessarily your, necessarily your followers but they're more about what the genre is so um i mean i'd probably suggest you djing some sets or some of your work up on there and then uh putting it up there and then you know once you get the views then you have all that and you can show that to promoters like hey look i get this many views or i have this many followers and that'll, you know, give them an idea of your following because you know how it is. Like everybody's like uh, DJs now or photographers or whatever. So it's like, how do you separate yourself from everybody else and and position yourself to where somebody should hire you? So for me, that's probably the, the best I, advice I can get nowadays because everything's changed compared to the when I was growing up and, when I was starting out in the game. You know, if I can uh, pick it back off of what of he course. said. Uh, my thing is this, like today, this generation has 10 times more, if not 50 times more, what we had. Yeah. You know, back then, we were just thankful. And I'm, and I'm being 100 with you. We were just thankful that we were put on a, we were put on a flyer. Yeah. That was it. We would hand out those flyers. That's me right there. You know, even though it might have been small, might not have been big, but that's that's me right there. When I first started DJing, man, I would just practice, stay home, get good at what I did at my craft. And then if I was lucky, I got 15 minutes set at a backyard party Yeah, with my own crate on their turntables. So I had to do my best. After that, I started, I moved up to quinceañeras. After that, I moved up to weddings, hall parties, you know, clubs. And then eventually the big stage 
where I'm DJing for rappers, yeah. 14,000 people. Right. A lot of people think that a lot of people like Esteban or a lot of these other groups think that they got like VIP treatment. No, but you had to work for yours. Mm -hmm. So today when we have social media, look at it as, as a self promotion, promote yourself until it pays off, promote yourself until it pays off. If anybody wants to hate, honestly, let them fucking hate, but keep going forward. That's right. Bro. Keep going forward. Promote yourself, bro. You know, like I said, we didn't, we didn't have cell phones, bro. We didn't have, uh, 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 you know, Instagram. We didn't have MySpace. We didn't have Twitter. We didn't have TikTok. We didn't have Christian Mingle, yeah. you know. Uh, um, so today, we bro. Had our, we had a bus pass and two feet and two hands and, and our mouthpiece, and that, that was it. That was it. That was it, bro. So I think you guys, uh, when I say you guys, uh, I, I'm saying this generation. They have more than what we have. Yeah. So, uh that's the best advice that I can give you, and that was the best advice that Esteban can give you. So I'll, I hope that you appreciate that, big dog. So keep moving right forward. Right on, bro. man. I go by the DJ Havoc official. Thank you for having me on Rodeon Radio. Oh, there you go. Man. You already are. You're already there. You're already there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. He started already. Yeah, he's exactly. He's on Rodeon Radio with me and you. <laughs> Call it your name. Where are you calling from? Uh... Mr. Moon from Texas, uh, saludos, Tony A, uh, Stevan. I just had a quick question, man. Um, yeah. Since y'all are pioneers in this game, man, and you just said it perfectly, man. Y'all didn't have the, 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 you know, the training wheels, the, the social media platforms, the, the, the followers and whatnot. Y'all had to get it, you know, from the ground up. And you know, my respects to y'all because uh, y'all are pretty much some of the. the the godfathers of the, of the of the movement of the of the hip hop and the Latino community and whatsoever. Um, I just had a question: w Would you, would either one of y'all, uh, advocate and and pursue to try to break ground for for other people that are influencers, um, people in the music industry, entertainment? to try to bring out more people to, to want to network and channel through instead of the negativity of, of uh, certain celebrities from this part, uh, this, uh, this section of uh, whatever, whatnot, uh, society, uh, would y'all be willing to make that impact to encourage the young generation as far as Latinos in hip hop, uh, entertainment, comedy, you, you name it, to just break ground to, you know, maybe like an academy, uh, a union, something like that, to just encourage the Rasa, man, to keep pushing forward to, to break ground. Yeah, I do I do that uh, daily. Um, the other day, uh, Pepsi Stronger Together uh, organized an event in East L.A. with the youth, and I did a like a workshop yeah, with about 30 youngsters, and we had, uh, they showed me their photos, I critiqued them and mentored them for the day. Uh, the second place winner. And then some other things. Uh, 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 oh, no. Okay. The second place winner won no, a I'm camera. Just, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. The second place winner won a camera. The first place winner won a day to roll around with me on one of my photo shoots. And uh, that's the type of shit I do all the time, but I do it below the radar yeah. because I'm I'm not doing it for likes yeah. or pats on the back. I'm doing it just. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Year. Yeah. You're doing it out of your quota, man. That's, yeah, that's I'm old doing school. It for. You know, just for for the love, you know, and um, today. Yeah, so man, the, the, the recognition, and 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 that's the thing, man. That uh, more respect to, to y'all, man, because you know y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't show it, but you know y'all have the 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 recognition, man, and and my respect to both y'all because uh, y'all keep it positive, and some of the things that that y'all bless people with, you know, some people don't hear it; they just hear about the likes, the 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 who said this and who said that, and uh. I just want to say, man, you know, my respect to both of y'all, man. Thank you, brother. Gracias, Canal. Thank you. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, yes, we're out of here. We got a couple more minutes. Let's keep it pushing. Uh, callers, let's go. You know what the dope thing is? We haven't had one hater yet. Oh, I hope they're, I hope they're not uh, online right now. No, but you know what? I never met a hater in person. Yeah, me neither. So think about that. So here we go. Caller, your name and where you calling from? Hey, this is Sandy from Houston, Texas. From Houston, Texas. Uh, Texas is in the building. You got a question? Yes. I have a question for you, Tony. Yes. Do you think we're ever going to have um, Play the Bill back? 
Platerville from Victorville back on the show? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that would be a problem. Uh, I like Platerville. Yeah, I don't think that would be a problem. It, it, you know what? And I'm glad you requested okay. that. So, yeah, I, I, I'll work on that for you. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. And I also just wanted to give a shout out to Esteban. I really appreciate all the work that you do. I feel like the work that you do with your photography, you literally are capturing history in the making through your work. So very definitely true. a big shout out to you. Thank you very much. Very true. Thank you very much. Let's keep it pushing. Uh, take a couple of more calls. Did, did you drink any beers last night at the Dallas Cowboys game? Two. Two beers. I didn't have one fucking beer. I just drank a... You know what's crazy? I ordered the, a large Pepsi because that's all they had. I like yeah. Dr. Dr. Pepper. But they had large Pepsi. And then I said, where's the straw? And he goes, it's a sippy cup. Jesus. That's what they said. It's a sippy what cup. The fuck? Exactly. So a I, sippy I feel, cup. A sippy cup. So yeah. What are you supposed to do? Hand it to the kids? Like, so yeah. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Damn. Hi, yeah. My name is Brianna. I'm calling from the Valley. From the valley. What valley, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, San Fernando. San Fernando Valley in the building. You got a question? Yeah, I have I have a question for Stefan. I just wanted to know, like, what was your experience like shooting the music video and meeting Jenny Rivera? Because, you know, it's someone different of the genre. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a trip for me because... Um, hmm. Um, Chino, Chino Brown and MC Magic did a song with her. Okay. And, uh, they wanted me to do the video and it was like, you know, they're independent artists. So yes. it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like a money job coming through the label. Yes. It was like, Hey, you want to do this? You know? And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you know, so they, they both chipped in and they were like, Hey, we got Jenny Rivera. She's uh, singing the hook. And like, you know, I was there. You know, I was even early to that. You know? Hell yeah. And um, I think I should probably shot the last video she's in and uh, maybe her last, like, photo shoot type thing. Oh, wow. Before she passed away. But she was one of, definitely one of the coolest people I've ever worked with and the most, like, down to earth and humble. And, yeah. like, you would have no idea she's this huge celebrity right. a huge star you, you know Esteban let me ask you a question and I believe that I'm probably asking the question for this caller as well um, if you were to let's just say post these pictures up of Jenny yeah on your let's just say Instagram right do you own these pictures where yeah. like her family can I come back and say no I own every photo I take okay good I've worked that out in my contracts so where everything's mine and like what could they what could they do anything with it you know yeah like there's I I put it in my book it's in this los angeles yeah and um i mean if i was a kid or a family member and some a photographer took a family or a picture of my mom or my sister or my you know right. cousin or whatever i would want it to be out there you know especially if in a different way in a different light yeah it's not in like a, a jenny fan type thing it's mixed in with a bunch of different people and it's showing like you know people of los angeles yeah okay Okay. So, Caller, do you have any other questions? Um, no, that's about it. I just want to say shout out to the both of you guys. I appreciate what you guys are doing for the Rasa and much love and respect to the both of you. Thank you. Thank did, you. Did I answer it right? I believe you did. Yeah, you did. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. All good. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, King Mexico from Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? You got a question? Oh, of course I do, bro. When it comes down to it, Devin, bro, <laughs> I tip off. You dope, bro. Like, your work has really inspired me to do certain things when I'm holding the camera. However, I do want to know if you've been in the with the hip-hop community for a big time. I would like to know, when it comes down to East Coast artists, who would you say has left people in your memory when it comes down to having a shoot with them? Um, I mean, there's been so many, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's asking if they're, uh, who from New York. Like has, from East Coast artists that you had a photo shoot with them that's left like a, a lasting impression or lasting memory 
Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, big pun. Yeah. Well, the guys that have passed away probably left the biggest impression because, like, mm -hmm. they're not around no more. I'll never be able to shoot them again. I'll never be able to see them again. So I'd say, like, big pun, you know, of course. Yeah. Uh, Prodigy from Mob Deep. Okay. You know, those guys. Did you, shot, did you wish your guru from Gangstar? Yep. I shot guru at the Shady Offices, cartoon tattooed him. Wow. And I... I met uh you know I'm I'm uh I'm in good you know I'm in good with Primo you know DJ Premier yes um we used to go to that studio up there um uh fuck D and D okay so you'd be up there and like Alchemist would be in a room with uh you know Mob Deep and Fat Joe would be over here and another guy would be here and the, like the, each room had a a huge person in hip hop and they were like just doing like hit after hit up in yeah. there so uh, i'm kind of bummed you know that i didn't film in those times and right. i didn't film what was really going on in right. there but um for me new york was like a second home because yeah i worked with house of pain yeah. that was signed to tommy boy so we'd always have to go out there for meetings and then i worked with cyprus and their their main headquarters was columbia in the sony building so we were always going to New York. If it wasn't for a show, it was for a meeting or for press or, you know, for for all that shit. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I was in New York a lot. And, um, man, New York is a shit, you know. I like it. I, like I love it. it. Hopefully next month I'll be there. I got my boy DJ Toro, who is the host of uh, This Is 50. Yeah. At, at a, 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 like, a interview, I guess, show. Yeah. And uh, he stays in Harlem. Whenever I go to New York, I stay my, I stay with my boy in Harlem. Okay. So I have a fucking great time. So I love New York. I can't live there because I'm, I'm a Cali boy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's home base. Yes, but I love it out there, man. So I took my son out there um, one time. I think he was, uh, he just turned 18. And we went to a club and it was like uh, Cool Herc. Oh, um, shit. Clark Kent, Kid Capri, and, and, uh, and Tony was uh they were all djing that night yeah and it was just like hit after hit old school hip-hop all the way till now and it was like you know i think uh tony touch invited me that night and wow. i was just like i showed it to my son i was like hey man you want to see some history all in one night tony like, touch tony toca i mean loca yep oh, yes tony touch clark kent kick yes. up cool herc like what what more could you ask one for? more yeah a lot of people don't know that clark kent was the dj for uh dana dane Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you, my my bro. I truly appreciate you calling in, homie. Yo. Now, before you leave, make sure we New York check out um Astoria Queen and Roosevelt and the scene with the food, bro, is amazing. You won't, you know, it won't be a letdown. All yeah, good. yeah, all good. Thank well, that's you, my bro. you. You're going out there next. Yes, sir. Have a blessed night, homie. And yeah, you got to check out. You like Italian food. I love Italian food, bro. Check out uh, Bar Pity down there by uh, Bleecker and 6th Avenue. Okay. Ask for Giovanni. It's like bomb-ass Italian food. Bar Pity. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's go. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Tony A. This is JR from the Bay, man. From where? The Bay. Oh, the Bay. The Bay. What's up, my brother? How hey, you doing, man? What's up, man? How you doing, brother? I'm cool. I'm cool. Pleasure to um, be on the platform with an Instagram and speak to him, get a chance. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask Esteban a couple of questions. I know he's worked with a lot of people through the years. Um, how was it like to work with uh, with Nip, Nipsey, Hustle, and also how was it to work with uh, Pacino and De Niro? I know he shot them for the film Righteous Kill, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, both those shoots were, I had a few shit, a uh, few shoots. Well, I did one shoot with, uh, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino just for that movie. And, um, it was like two days. The first day I showed it to the set, I was there for eight days or for, man, fucking, <laughs> this fucking Espalon, man, got me twisted. Okay. Here we go again. I was shot photos for two days at. Uh, the studio where um, Al Pacino and De Niro was. And the first day I was there for eight hours. I didn't shoot one picture. The second day I was there for six hours, and I got four 
I think uh, four and a half minutes to do the photo shoot. They're like, hey, where's that guy at? And I go, I'm right here. And they can, <laughs> here they come. And so they open these two doors that just like pounded open. There was like 20 people behind them, like managers, accountants, uh, agents, lawyers, everything. And uh, they go, okay, hurry up. You got to go. So I shot one roll of film. And that type of film I had 10 photos on. It only, it's this big format camera. Yeah. It shot 10 photos and they're like, okay, cool. Thank you. And they started taking them away. I go, wait, 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 let me get one more. You know, like, so they let me get five more, which was half a roll of the next thing. So I only took 15 photos and um, wow. I rushed that film to the photo lab and I was like, Hey man, this is my most important roll of film ever in my life. You know, like I said earlier, yes. those guys were like a big influence me Absolutely. when I was a kid with their movies. And I, I told the guys in the dark room, like, hey, I got to watch you develop this. They're like, why? You know, you come here every day. I go, I know, I know, I know. Like, don't trip. Like, it's just me. Like, I got to make sure I got the yeah, shot, yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah. a lot of pressure, you know. So I saw the shit come through, and I was like, okay, I got the shot, you know. <laughs> and so uh, that was a pretty stressful couple of days of my life. And then um, <laughs> with Nip, I shot a couple of times with him because at that time he hadn't signed yet and he was an up-and-coming artist. Yeah. But at that time I had power to it magazines because of I was, a, you know, a okay photographer, you know, so I could call up magazines and be like, hey, you know, I, I got right. this person I want to shoot for you guys, you know. So I was offering them like J-Rock, um, Nipsey, Little Easy, and a couple different uh, up-and-coming artists. Yeah. And, um... I ended up doing a shoot with Nipsey for Double XL, and I did a shoot with him for a magazine called Rhyme Magazine. It was a West Coast, LA-based magazine. Yeah. And um, that was before, I think he was signed to Virgin at that time, but that album never came out. But um, mm. we were in the talks of doing the album cover for that. And at that time, I also was plugged into Known Gallery. My boy Casey from... Uh, from AWR and MSK, he had a gallery called uh, Known Gallery, and right next door was the Diamond Store. Okay. So I told Nip, hey, for your album packaging, let's go do these photos of you, like a day in the life of Nipsey. Yeah. And then we'll, for your listening party, we'll do something different. We'll have a gallery opening with all the photos that are in the album packaging. The music will be playing in the gallery, and then next door, we'll do a capsule, like a collection of the photos on shirts, because it had it wasn't being done back then. And so that was the idea behind that whole yeah, thing. But yeah. then something happened between him and the label, and he never ended up putting that that record out through them. So that shoot never went through, and those ideas didn't go right. through. And right, you know what, Stephen. Uh, uh, I'm going to share something with you that you probably already thought of. I, I guarantee you probably already thought, thought of. Yeah. Have you ever thought about releasing a book? Hypothetically, let's just say we call it unreleased. Yeah. And it's just pictures of rappers that you've took that they've never been released before. So it's the first time there's a scene like yeah. a Nipsey. Yeah. It's the first time there's a scene like a different picture of Big Pun. Yeah. You know well, yeah, I mean, next year is the 50-year anniversary of hip-hop. Yes. So I wanted to put out a hip-hop book. Please. And there yes. would be a lot of that. And also, too, is like what I've learned in the in the publishing world is yes. you have to have a couple pictures of people that people know. And they're like, okay, this is this guy. And then that, yes. or that, will bring in, that will bring people in. When they see like the picture that everybody's seen of Nipsey yeah. or the picture everybody's seen of Cypress or Big Pun, that'll lure them in. And then once they're in there, you know, they got the book. Then we'll show all the other photos of unreleased stuff. Absolutely. Or, and because plus, a lot of my photos, people have only seen, I have about 500,000 photos. And it's not like I was one of those spray and pray type of photographers. Yeah. Where you just keep your finger on the button. Like, yeah, and I was paying for the shit, so every shot I took, it had to count. It had to be good enough to fire it exactly. off. Exactly. You just want one of those. So yeah, where they had to count. It had, yeah, yeah. They just put their finger on the button and they look away, and go eat a sandwich <laughs> and shit. And meanwhile, they're getting a fucking 
thousand photos of the same shit. So okay, with the caller hanged up, let's take the next call. Okay, yeah. Caller, well, your name you, and where are you calling from? Yo, yo, hey, this is Fernando. What's up, Fernando? Where are you calling from, Fernando? What's up? What's up, Tony? Hey, born and raised in Southie, but I'm living in, in uh, Lake Tahoe right now. Okay, all good, all good. How's the weather in Lake Tahoe, bro? Yeah, hey, hot? It's nice, brother. It's nice, Tony. I appreciate you. Thanks, thank you for asking. The the weather is nice. It's in the in the low eighties. All good, nice. guys. It's better than last year because last year we had all those fires. Oh yeah. yeah. So it was it was really smoky out here. Yeah. You know we had all those fires last year. But um, <clears throat> living in Lake Tahoe now, I have a question for Stevan. Okay. Well, first of all, mad respect to Tony and uh, and Stevan. Uh, Tony, Thank I you. love your memes. Thank you. I always steal your memes, brother. They're funny as hell. Though, so I'm always jacking your memes. You got to go to my but, story uh, from if you want to check out my memes. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Stevan, being living in uh, one of the most beautiful places in the world, yes. Lake Tahoe. Have you ever uh, have you ever taken um, landscape photography? Um, I see you. I love your photos, but uh, have you ever done like any landscape or go go um, to like the canyons or whatnot or or the mountains? You ever get into any of that photography, brother? Um, I have a little bit of it here and there, but I never got into it because I don't think I spent enough time in that environment to where I could really kill it like a Ansel Adams type of guy did. You know, like I think uh, when you want to do good pictures of something, you kind of got to spend time in that culture that genre or or that that area you know to yeah. really absorb what it's yeah. about and to put out the right interpretation of that that area or whatever you're shooting so i just haven't been out well, there I enough to you, shoot it. okay yeah i'll, yeah, I'll no, get I the kids that. together and the grandkids and like, will oh, be bro. up there yeah, i'm just, right here brother man i have my lady cook a supper meal hey tony same goes for you and your son brother you know uh Whenever you guys are up in Lake Tahoe, um, holler at your boy. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you, my bro. Thank you. Totally hey, appreciate hey, Tony, it. Hey, can you and, jet and ski and up Stephon? there? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We can jet ski. Uh, I work at a member's club. I do security at, at a member's club. And, okay. Um, so I can hook you up with the jet skis, with the kayaks, with the longboard. Oh, um, shit. If not this summer. Definitely, definitely like next summer, brother. We got you. Yeah, let's do it. We'll let's, head up there with the RVs and we'll just yeah. caravan up there and kick it with you. Kick it with you, yeah, all day for at least a yeah. week. Uh, yeah, thank you, my bro. <laughs> hey, Tony, th- thank you for uh, for taking my call, brother man. We love you and uh, and, and we stand with you guys. You know, um, Rasa United. Um, Absolutely. If, if we work together, man, we can do a lot of things. Absolutely. Um, appreciate you guys and uh, thank you, thank you for your time. Brother thank man. you. All right, my bro. Let's keep it going. We got about ten more minutes and then we're out of here. So let's go, caller. Let's go, callers. Let's go. We got about 10 more minutes, so whoever's in the call, call. Do it now, because I got all the, these beers and tequila. I'm ready to hit the baño. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And he's ready, he's ready to go eat a taco de carne asada, vegan style. Yeah. <laughs> Some squash and broccoli and eggplant. I mean, Hell yeah. Sounds that's great. great. Sounds great. Caller, your name, or where are you calling from? Hi, this is George calling from uh, Rancho Cordova by way of Watsonville. How you doing, guys? Hi, good. Doing, How you George? Doing? doing good. Long time uh, fan, Tony A. Since the Scandalous album back in the day, like 1991, when that dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, been looking at Esteban's photos. I think he was in the in, in, Industry Insider magazine. Yeah, yeah. He had some you. good yeah, photos there. there. Uh, Thank you. I remember one in particular. The like there's all the Latino rappers on the cover. I don't know if you're involved with that. With like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, big yeah. pun. Yep. Yeah, I was. Do you have any stories about that photo shoot? Because that was a really good picture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We shot that in the. I think it was called the South Side Seaport in New York. Is the one with the boats in the background, right? Yeah. 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 That was like. Uh, uh, a magazine, you know, industry insiders like a club and lifestyle magazine, uh, chain Weisenberg, uh, and miles Kovacs own that. And, um, they invited all the Latino rappers from the East coast and the West coast out there. And that was everybody that actually showed up and we got them together for a group shot. And then we did, uh, individuals shots of each group. And, um, that shit was dope, man pretty cool we uh made some posters out of it 
and uh and he owes me one yeah and i'm gonna i got you you know what i'm gonna bring you a poster uh with one of those magazines and we're gonna shoot a photo of you that day i'm gonna be the first mexican on your photo shoot who's gonna take off his shirt yeah hell yeah <laughs> Hell yeah. Right on. Much respect, guys. I just want to give that comment and uh, rock on, you guys. Much respect. Thank, Thank you, my you brother. too. Let's go. Rock. Somebody, I haven't heard rock on since the 80s. That's a, like a KLOS KMET yeah. saying. Rock on. You got to go like this. Yeah. Rock on. Oh, no, not this. Rock on. Yeah. Okay. Remember, remember that song? I love rock and road. Yeah. As a kid, I thought I said, I love Rocky Road. Yeah, ice cream. The ice cream. So, yeah. I, I love- would sing that at 31 Flavors when I had to go in there. Caller, you're love Rocky Road. <laughs> Caller, wh- your name, where are you calling from? Shady, Boston. Shady from Boston, Boston, Massachusetts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Hell yeah. Let's go. Hey, so uh, my question is for Stefan. Yes, I was sir. wondering because I see when a lot of his work is black and white or almost all of it. Um, it, it, it like, what does he think about people that are colorblind? Can, can they become. Um, like in his in, in his vision, can they become like, I, I guess I would say the black and white uh, photographers, like really good photographers? Has he met any? Um, no, I haven't met any. I met a colorblind graffiti artist, and uh, he told me, you know, not to tell nobody who he is because then people would trip out. But he's fucking badass, and he, like, his graffiti is off the chain. He does a lot of murals and shit like that. Um, I haven't met any colorblind photographers, but I do know it sounds crazy, but there's a documentary on blind photographers and um, they wow. featured like maybe five or six photographers that are completely blind or legally blind. And um, that shit was dope. That just like it, it, uh, it inspired me, you know, it made me think like, man, you don't have no fucking excuses at all ever for anything. Like these dudes are are doing photography and they don't they can't even see. That's a wow, 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 yeah. Is and there then, any reason why most of your work is black and white? Uh, well, at the start when I first started shooting photos, I was it was like the only film. Like my dad was a photographer, and he shot mostly black and white. So I was just going with the flow. It was it's like it was half the price as color and. Um, you know, if you like to shoot a lot, then it costs a lot. So if you wanted to shoot a lot and you didn't have a lot of money, you would go to black and white. Yeah. Hopefully I answer your question, bro. Good. Hey, bro, can I, ask you, can, can I ask you something? Sure. Your phone's breaking up. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, have you ever heard of w- Wilmington, Massachusetts? Ah, man, you asked me that last time when we missed something, but I don't know what that place is. Oh, your phone's breaking up. Okay, cool. All good, my brother. Thank you, bro. Greatly appreciate you, homie. Have you been out there? No, but the father of my grandbaby is from Wilmington, Massachusetts. Yeah. And he met my daughter from Wilmington here, California. That's sick. Crazy. Yeah. And I'm going to introduce you to him right now. Okay. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Yo, what's up, man? They call me Miguelito from San Valley, San Fernando Valley. Miguelito, did you call earlier? Yeah, I was the one that called uh, <clears throat> the other day. About, I was a tattoo artist, man. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I was, I, he hasn't checked out my drawing yet. I already sent it that same night. I sent that drawing. But uh, <clears throat> what's it called? Uh, yeah, he hasn't seen it. He has, I don't think he has seen it yet. But I had a question for Stellan. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Oh, you still remember me, right, Tony? I'm the one that called. I'm the tattoo artist. Bro, let me tell you something. Without the respect, remind me on the daily, bro. Like, I know you say you sent me some stuff. Send it to me tomorrow again, por favor, because I'm going to be honest with you. I receive about 50 DMs daily. My emails are more than that. So, without the respect, por favor, canal, just send it to me again. I- I'm asking, Okay. Yeah, it was uh, the one with Scar, but um, it's all right. I kept that in consideration. I was like, yeah, you know, he has a lot of followers. It's, it's cool. But uh, no, nah, it's cool. I didn't rush it or nothing, but I just had a, a question first. Everyone. Yeah, go for it. I'm right here. 
Hey, mucho gusto, Esteban. It's my first time meeting you, man. How uh, you doing, Miguelito? I had a question. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good now, man, that we're finally get to talk, man. I appreciate right. your documentary. Uh, um, honestly, man, I've been keeping up with you and Mr. Cartoon, be keeping up on your work. Because I'm a tattoo artist, bro, professionally. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, man, he's been a very, uh, very inspiration. Um, he's, he is the reason why I went, I invested and I went broke into just buying an airbrush when I was like 13, 14. Dude, I would, I would, I was so broke that I would fucking, I would do, I would practice my airbrush with water, water. And then I would get like a, 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 a like, um, like a gray savanna and I'll put it, I'll flip my mattress and I'll start practicing techniques with like water just so I can get the right shading, you know, yeah. because yeah. paint was pretty. So that's how I started. You know, I'm just saying you guys, um, that's a cartoon. You, uh, you have been a very, very uh, inspiration back in the day when he was working with Metro C- PCS, was, yeah. was it, remember he was doing the phone? Yeah, the uh, yeah. So I was, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That was back yeah. in like 2009, 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the um, black and yellow one. You, man. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, I, I wasn't. I mean, I didn't have money like that at the time, but I mean, I always wanted to get. I was always looking at it through the window, like, damn, like, yeah. oh, Mr. Cartoon really got with Metro CPS. What the fuck? Like, yeah. damn, that's cool. The Rasa coming up with with the phone services. But yeah. um, I had a question, man. How was your How was your experience, man? When you um, when you met uh Triggs, rest um, in peace. Triggs, I mean, every every time I was with him was cool. We we're we we're pretty close. Um, I mean, it's just like uh, you know, when you have those good homies that you can always count on, and you could you know that you could call them for anything, even if you don't, they would always be there for you. That's that's a t- that's the type of guy that Triggs was. He was always, uh, you know. That's how you guys always, met. Uh, I met him doing. I did a photo with him because he wanted to get into maybe doing uh, movies, and so um, I I did a a photo shoot with him so that he could show people so he could get into doing movies. And then ever since well, that day, there. we clicked. Uh, early two thousands. Okay. Yeah. And that 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 was before you had a shop, right? Yeah, way before. Oh damn! And that was, and you only did that one photo shoot, or you did a couple? I did about him? twenty. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was I was pretty tight with him. I went to you know visit him at all his shops. Kicked it with him when whenever he did events and stuff like that. I have uh, one more question. Um, how how come one more question? Um, how, I wonder. Uh, how come I've noticed that you don't really have a lot of tattoos? Have have have. Uh, how come you haven't had a cartoon uh, do a tattoo on you, or it's just not your thing no more? You just grab it. Or... Well, I, I I he has a waiting list. So I couldn't get an appointment. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got like um, <laughs> like the a, a lot of cartoons. First tattoos he did were on me. They just aren't. Uh, yeah. Visible. Like, yeah, they're I not visible. Like, and, that, um, like, like that clown, like that clown that you have on your arm, right? Yeah, both that of those are. Right? That's like, uh, I think. Uh, let's see, that was the. Uh, how about this? I can count them. That was like the fifth and sixth tattoos that he ever did. So, so he did five, five or six tattoos on you. Um, he did uh the first one, the second one. Those were with a uh, homemade machine that I made. And then he did like the third and fourth on another homie, and then he did the this fifth and sixth one. He did another one on on my arm from here to you know my shoulder to my elbow on both sides, and then he did all the portraits on my chest. I take my shirt so off right now, like, but I, I don't want anybody to see me with my shirt off because I'm not in good shape right now. All good, my brother. Hey, man, to get work on you, man. Or- it, it should be probably should embrace that man. That's Mr. Cartoon. He's a he's a legend, man. Yeah, when I no when I pass away, it. I'm gonna have him make uh, lampshades out of it. You know, yeah, absolutely. In Japan, hey, hey, when hey, people hey, die and hey, they... look at Rick Ross, that guy's a that guy's hella fat. And he and he has hella tattoos, and people don't care about that. So they just look at his art. Oh, but uh, hey, yeah. man, you know it's good cool, cool to talk to you, man. And thank you, Tony, for the opportunity, man. Yes, thank okay. you, my bro. Yeah, for sure. Have well, a since you put it like that, I'm gonna take my shirt off. Fuck yeah, that. yeah. Go ahead, Rick go ahead. Ross can do it. I can do it. Okay, no. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, I got one more call. Hold on, one more call. Here's what I'm gonna do. And this is my brother right here, Marvelous Inc. 
he doesn't call himself a tattoo artist. He just a tattooist. Yeah. So I got to call him. And this is my last call right here. This is my brother right here. Hello. Marvelous. What's up, brother? Hey, carnal. I have you alive right now with Esteban. Um, anything you want to ask, carnal? I, I know you were a tattooist. Right. So, so, and this is a photographer. Look, sabes que, carnal, if there's anybody that I want him to shoot a picture of you, it's this guy. I don't know if he, if he ever has. Has uh, uh, Esteban ever shot a picture of you? Um, no, you know what? First first of all, I, I don't have any questions, um, but yeah. I would like to show appreciation for his work, bro. He, he, he has some beautiful work capturing the moment of the raza and its true form. You know, I, I love that. I have messaged him before on Instagram, but and um, I've seen that he read it, but I know that he gets a lot of messages. Yeah. So, you know, I know he can't get to everybody. So, but I just want to show my appreciation and respect. You know, he he's doing he's done a lot in his lifetime, and and I'm sure a lot of people appreciate what he's doing as as well as myself. I, I always look at his pictures. I, I love it. I love him. Thank you know, you, but brother. um, hell yeah. My all yeah. uh, my respects to you, bro. I'm um, it's, nice, it's nice to meet you over the phone, though. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Um, well, what part of the city you stay in? I'm from original the East LA side, Chicano. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right here in East Los. Oh, you okay? Yeah, because um, yeah, we could uh, hook up and do a flick over there. Oh, that would be. I appreciate that. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easy. Yeah, you know what? You know, marvelous. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot him your info, and maybe okay. you guys can hook up, bro. Because I truly do believe that you represent uh, Maravilla. Uh, third huh. third generation that uh, hmm. you know, I think it would be a dope photo shoot, bro. Yeah, that would be beautiful, man. Hey, um, but yeah, all my respects and my appreciation. And hey, Tony, <laughs> your shows, uh, we're all right here watching the show, brother. Oh, but yeah, you guys keep doing, you guys keep you doing your thing, and I'll see you when I see you. Okay, Absolutely. yeah, for sure. We'll see you soon. All love, my brother. All right, yeah, bless all my night, respect. Tony. Okay, you too. Late. That was it. Oh that, shit! That was it. Hey, uh, marvelous is a good fucking dude. Third, yeah, third generation gangster, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, bro, he 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 always says, "I'm not a tattoo artist. I'm a tattooist." I'll, I'll send you his stuff, and I think okay, you yeah. appreciate that, bro. I, I do believe that he deserves like uh, a good ass picture. Yeah, I'll knock that out quick. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. So, other than that, uh, Carnal, we're good. Any, any shout outs you want to give, man? Um, what did we do? Finish? Uh, let's finish no, let's, this let's, shit. Let's, up. Let's shit. <laughs> to the head. Yep. To driving. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This was filmed at three o'clock. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Exactly. Yeah. Time to go get uh, some of that good old vegan food now. Time to go get a burrito de chile verde yep. con todo vegan style yeah so yeah it pretty much is just cauliflower with a tortilla yep so yeah <laughs> that's <is true. laughs> Fuck, man. hey but uh yeah shout out to uh you know joker brand soul assassin cypress hill hell yeah the little homies third world they're playing tonight yes at uh the heart lebo goob uh goober show over there in la heart lebo yeah, Heart Lebo. It's like they the they spin like um, soldies and all that. Okay, okay. And, and you, said, you said a goober show. Yeah, they're doing a show in uh, South Central tonight. Shit, okay. And uh, they're performing there, the Third World. They've done uh, three shows now. One at To Live and Die in I, LA. I know. I had them here. Yeah. Yeah. And then one at uh, the Dickies event we had, and okay. then tonight. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say something right real fast. Okay, go for it. Esteban, you know what I want. First cool. of all, I want to go visit wherever your 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 place is at. Okay. Yeah. I'll go pick up the poster. I'll go pick up the magazine. I'll stand in any fucking ad for a photo shoot. Okay. But I want to say this. Well, I got to shoot you here, where you know, in yeah, your own exactly my environment. Okay. Yeah. Here's here's the crazy part. You you gave me a Joker brand shirt. Yeah. And in the back, it had the you know the, the LA shit. Okay. Yeah. The whole LA, the the world fucking famous LA picture. Right. I'm in Ojai. Mm hmm. Ojai. Okay. Yeah. It's nice La over there. Yes. Very fucking. If you want to go relax, go to Ojai. Yeah. I found a brewery. Right. Okay. And I hope this guy's not watching because this guy's, he was super nice. So I, yeah, I don't yeah. mean to. So I said, um, 
All I drink is Pacifico Modelo. What do you have, you know, Modelo? Well, you have this beer. Okay, cool. So I drank it. So I turn around, and there's a guy, and he's looking at me like this. Yeah. Bro, I'm like, I look over there, and he's like this. Yeah. I'm like, I'm about to knock the motherfucker out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he, so I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm drinking my beer. He comes and sits next to me. And I said, no. What's up, man? He goes like this. Tony A. And I was like, you know me? Rodeo Radio. And I'm like, what's up, man? I said, I didn't think, yeah, I didn't think you would recognize me, but okay. Yeah. He goes, you know what he said? Huh. I saw your shirt <laughs> and I made the connection. <laughs> That's, <great. laughs> That's a trip, huh? Yeah. So Esteban yeah. and Tony A. Yeah. Rodeo Radio. I made the connection. Can I take a picture with you? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's take a yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. So I was like, what the f Yeah, I trip out on, on that shit too because sometimes I don't know if fools are trying to run up on me or if they want to you know, you. shake hands. So like one time I was in um, Ikea and I was with, I was walking around in there with somebody and, and I seen this fool like staring at me. You know, this is maybe 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Baggy shirt on. You know, some fucking 50 uh, Ben Davis's, Cortez's, yeah. ball headed. And me and him are walking like at the end of the aisles. So every time I'd walk by an aisle, I would look down and I'd see him. I'd go to the next one, walk down, see him, walk yeah. to the next one, see him. And I told the, the person I was with, I go, hey, man, there's this motherfucker in here. He keeps mad dogging me. He's tripping out on me. Like, and, and they're like, you're tripping, man. Ain't nobody give a fuck, you know? Yeah. And um I went to another aisle and ended up starting to walk down that one and then he started to walk down that one. And I go, Oh, it's on. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Like I was just ready to just start going in the store. And uh, which sounds crazy yeah. Back then, now it's common, you know. Now yeah. like people fight and stab and kill each other in the stores, like no big deal with a hundred cameras and everything. <laughs> but back then that was fucking crazy. Yeah. So Usually it was like, hey, let's take a walk outside if you saw somebody that, you know, you had a problem with and, you know, you'd handle it, whatever, outside. But at this time, I was like, oh, it's going down right now inside the store, which at that time was crazy. And he walked up and we got like 10, 10 feet from each other. And it was like one of those like draw down type of things like in the Western. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and fucking... I, you go, were, I was like, what's I up, bet You, you goes, were clean, clean Eastwood. Yeah, yeah, I was ready. I did my 10 steps and I was ready to draw. Like, I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, what's up, homie? He goes, hey, what's up, homie? He goes, and I was like, you good? He goes, y he goes you're that, uh, you're, um, you're, uh, uh, that. And, you know, as he's trying to think, he's, you know, thinking hard. He's like, has a, the mad and probably face. nervous and yeah. groupied out. Yeah. He's like, you're the guy that takes the pictures. And I go, yeah. He goes, Man, I'm a big fan, homie. You know, I just want to, you know, shake your hand, say, you know, salute, wow. my respect. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, fuck, man. You know, because you know when that shit happens, you it's get true, your, bro. Your, your adrenaline's your going. Your adrenaline's pumping, bro. Yeah, you're thinking it's like, it's, it's on and cracking. But it, it wasn't even like that. The guy bro. just wanted to say hello. But the way we were walking down the aisles, yes. looking at yes. each other, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and then we come together on the next aisle. Bro, yes. I was like, this is going down for sure. Bro, and I've taken my daughter out to dinner, and I had motherfuckers stare at me like this. Yeah. <laughs> like this, and I'm like, okay, baby, I'm going to go ahead and pay, go ahead and walk out, and I'm going to walk right behind you. I'm going to fuck this fool up. Yeah. And then when we meet, what's up, homie? Tony A, can I get a picture? Yeah. Motherfucker, don't you ever fucking do that yeah. again. <laughs> and I was like, what, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. He was staring at me the whole time I'm eating my enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, they don't mean no harm. So it's like, I know. I you, know. Like, I mean, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be here. What episode are we on right now? What episode? Pre recorded. Are we on? Uh, no, call, not talking. No, like everything. Calls with the wizard. 
Yeah. Cuts with it. But, but we've been on here three years, bro. So yeah. much love, much respect. So other than that, Esteban, do um, you want to give any shout outs or anybody you want to diss? No, Go. I don't diss nobody. Okay. You know, fuck all the drama, you know. I'm Absolutely. 56 now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, shout out to, oh, I want to say shout out to everybody. Yes, sir. That way I don't forget nobody. Yeah, shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody. I didn't forget you, motherfucker. Ha, <laughs> you can't say, hey, what about me? Oh, you forgot about me. I didn't forget about you. Shout Absolutely. out to everybody. Shout out to everybody. So I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, because there's not a hoop that he can't fix, because he can do it in the mix. Ooh. And uh, once again, my, my boy Norbert for joining the Rolling Radio team, the people that hit on him because... He came here. If he hit on, if you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. So, uh, my son, be scandalous for helping promote this and the hip hop Jedi. Bro, you gotta meet the hip hop Jedi. This guy uses the force inappropriately. Yeah, yeah. I like those kind of guys. Like, like you see a girl with a mini skirt, and he'd be like, Yeah. There you go. It'll just drop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, crazy. I'm like, oh my god, how did that happen? It's the force. Oh, good. does he have an IG or they canceled him? They canceled him. Oh man, Porcito. Yeah, the port, the, the force is like the force wasn't with him for that. Uh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we'll try to. I'm gonna call the president. Maybe we can get him back on there. No, no, we, you know, the yeah, president the, of the IG. force of the president. Yeah. So anyway, let's get him back on here. Other than that, I want to thank me. So you know what? Every time I have Esteban here, we have a fucking great fucking time, bro. We have a fucking great fucking time. So yeah, uh, pour me another one. Let's go live before we get we get out of here. Yeah, one more. Yeah, one more for the road. Hey, yeah, one more for the fucking road because it's six I'm o'clock on Saturday. Pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah pre-recorded. And we're gonna do this shot right now. Hell yeah, let's go. Nice and faded. Fuck out. Exactly. Ain't shit here. Let's finish this shit. Uh, let's, keep, dun, dun. let's keep pushing. Oh, oh shit. Who's on the mix right, right, right there? Right, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Ba-da, 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 ba-da. Uh-huh. Two Buffalo Mexican girls. Yeah. Front to the outside. Round the outside. Round the outside. Okay, my yep. brother. To the head. Yes, sir. And we're out of here. Uh huh. Hello. Hello. Alex, take us out of here. Let me take you away from it all. Let me take you away from it all.